We are live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Northboro Board of Selectmen meeting of uh, April 3rd, 2023. The time is 7.02. I'm Mitch Cohen. I will call the meeting to order. Uh, and I have some introductory remarks, as with all remote meetings. This open meeting of the Northboro Board of Selectmen is being conducted remotely consistent with the brand new Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. All members of the Northboro Board of Selectmen are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. This order allows the Northboro Board of Selectmen to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to follow the view the live stream of the meeting may do so by going to Northboro Remote Meetings on YouTube on the link posted on the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation, unless such participation is required by law, this meeting will feature public comment. I'll go around the room and uh, introduce everyone, make sure you can be heard in the order on my screen. Scott Rogers. Present. Julianne Hirsch. I'm here. Kristen Wexted. Here. Jason Perot. Present. And Acting Interim Town Administrator, Becca Meekins. Present. Very good. Thanks, everybody. Uh, first item on our agenda, as always, is public comment. Um, I see a Bob listed first. I suspect that's actually the Bob that's probably going to want to join us for our meeting. Bob, you can you can lower your hand, and I promise I'll bring you in uh, during the appropriate time. If you happen to be a different Bob, leave your hand up, and I'll get to you in just a second. Um, I see Norm Corbin here um, for public input. Norm, I'll bring you in. Norm, if you could unmute yourself and identify and say what's on your mind, please. So you can hear me fine? Hear you fine. Excellent. So I'm Norm Corbin at 35 Whitney Street. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. I'm following up on a few recent emails I've forwarded to the board uh, regarding White Cliffs. Um, I wanna encourage the Board of Selectmen to consider moving the Metro West proposal to the next step as soon as possible. So it can be eventually be voted on at a by the community at a fall meeting, a fall town meeting. As you are well aware, your acceptance only opens the door for evaluations and negotiations of the proposal. Any transfer of the property can only happen with a town meeting vote. With the board's approval, vetting of the proposal can start. This would include community forums to discuss details of the proposals modifications to the proposal to address some of the concerns uh, that have been addressed, starting negotiations for a contract. I strongly feel that since the purchase of Whitecliffs was decided at a town meeting vote, that a town meeting vote should decide the fate of this project. I'm very concerned that a minimum of three board members can cancel a $24 million project before it is properly vetted. So what I'm doing is I'm encouraging fellow citizens to contact the Board of Selectmen to have them move the Metro West project evaluation to this next step as soon as possible so that additional information can be discussed in public forums with the goal of a fall meeting to decide the project's outcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Norm. Um, I, will, I will simply say we certainly have received a large number of uh, emails over the last few days about Whitecliffs, and um, uh, we, we don't have anything scheduled right now, but we definitely will bring it back for further discussion. What I've been telling people is my best guess is the May 8th meeting. Um, I think our next meeting will probably be pretty filled with uh, issues related to both uh, hiring a town administrator, as well as pre-town meeting issues. Then we've got a town meeting, and then the meeting after that will be, thankfully, be on the town meeting process and have an interim in place in all likelihood. And uh, and then I think we should get back to discussing White Cliffs a little bit more and, uh, and reach a decision. And um, based on the timeline that was set forth by Metro West is they'd like to get to a September town meeting and they would need about three months to prepare for that. So that would put us in a June time frame as far as making a decision goes. Um, and that doesn't predicate any any decision or anything like that, but that's sort of the timeline that I that I see. 
um, but we will definitely be bringing this back to uh, to the board for more uh, more discussion. Hopefully, some kind of a decision um, by then. Um, I see Bob still with a hand up. So I again, my suspicion is that's Bob. But let me uh, let me find out. Bob, I'm bringing you in. Um, are you our, our search consultant, Bob? Uh, I I think so. Maybe not. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to send you back to the attendees list, and I'll bring you in in a few minutes. You don't need to raise your hand. We'll, we'll bring you in. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay. I don't see any other uh, hands up for public input at the beginning of the meeting. First item on our agenda otherwise is approval of meeting minutes for March 16th, 2023. Would someone like to make a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. I move the board vote to approve the meeting minutes for March 16th as presented. Second. Second. Okay. Motion made by Scott, seconded, I think, by Julianne. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor, uh, Jason. Aye. Kristen. Aye. Julianne. Aye. Scott. Aye. I also vote aye. Vote is unanimous in favor. Meeting minutes are approved. Thank you very much. Now we have Bu Buzz Stepinski. I apologize, Buzz, for mispronouncing your last name, and Bob Mercer of Municipal Resources to talk about the town administrator process. And we'll bring you fully into the meeting. You could unmute yourselves, and if you'd like, turn on your cameras. Yes, there we go. You were the right Bob all along. Thank you. I was, I was there. <laughs> That's, I, I, I cannot fault you for being anxious to get in on the meeting. We have uh, <laughs> public input at the start of our meetings, and um, so I, I wanted to didn't want to assume you were you were that Bob that we were expecting for the meat of our meeting. So, uh, so that's <laughs> that I brought you in. Mm -hmm. Worked out fine. Um, well, welcome um, for our first uh, first full meeting with uh, with the two of you at the helm of the search process. Um, I, I guess take it away. Give us a little a little overview and timeline, and um, and then we'll get into decisions on the advertisement and so forth. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair and, and members of the board. Uh, hello, <laughs> again. Um, you do know there's an NCAA game later on tonight, I'm sure. <laughs> but Buzz, I think, is a UConn fan. I know I am, but anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, so I know you've got a busy agenda. You've got some interviews you got to do. So we'll try to move through this, Mr. Chair, sure. uh, fairly quickly. You've got some decisions uh, we're going to need from you. Uh, and then we can go from there. So um, this, hopefully, uh, after tonight, will be the official start of the actual search. Once we get the ad approved, uh, if that's approved tonight, we're anticipating it's going to go live uh, next Monday in all of the venues. That would be the six regional um, municipal associations, the International City Managers Association, uh, International City Managers, um, and all of those will go live. Uh, we expect that that's a, about a 30-day advertisement. That's pretty much what we do generally, which would mean a return date for all of the uh, expected resumes uh, of May 8th. I think I'm right on that, Buzz. I think we Correct. looked at that. Correct, yeah, May 8th. <clears throat> so that would be the return, uh, that would be the close of the, uh, of the submittals to us. Uh, <clears throat> we will then begin a process uh, of evaluating those uh, those that we receive, the candidates we receive, uh, we will narrow that field down uh, to a, a group that we think are, should be considered by the screening committee or the search committee uh, that we'll talk a little bit about with you folks uh, in a few minutes. Uh, we will conduct some follow-up. Uh, we'll send them essays uh, that we will work with your search committee on uh, to develop some essay questions uh, that they will, ask, uh, they, they will be asked to answer. Generally, the answers are, and we try to restrict it to a couple of pages uh, of answers to each question, because you don't want to read novels. 
because uh, you'll be getting all this material too <laughs> once we narrow mm -hmm. down the field. Um, so we ask them to be succinct in answering the questions. Um, don't just ramble, just answer the questions. And the important thing for us as we evaluate, and you, you will also, is that to, to determine, I think, if they have the writing skills to get their point across in answering the questions, if they've done their homework on your community, uh, because the questions will, and we'll talk to the screening committee about that, questions will revolve around potential issues. I just heard another one tonight that uh, potentially is an issue in the community um, that you're dealing with and uh, future boards will deal with. Uh, so anyway, uh, once we get those back, uh, typically uh, a couple of people don't want to do the work, so they will drop out. And that's okay. We, uh, we, we, we want them to be committed to Northboro, not to the other three searches they're in. Um, so we want them to do some work uh, for Northboro. Once we get those, uh, we'll evaluate them. We don't generally uh, eliminate people unless they really blew it uh, from the essay responses, because these are fairly intelligent folks who have done the work in the past. And so we don't generally eliminate them. However, we may eliminate them because Buzz and I then do uh, phone interviews with them for 45 minutes to an hour to get to know who they are. We want to know who they are, what their purpose is, why are they applying, any gaps in your resumes, what happened in 2014 where it shows you're not working. Just tell us about it. That's all we want to know. We're not looking to nail anybody. We just want to find out because you folks will have those questions. And we want to have those answers for you. Um, once we narrow that group down, we'll bring those to the search committee. I don't know how many there'll be. Could be eight, nine people. And we won't recommend, we don't rank. We won't recommend one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We let the committee determine who they want to interview. And we'll give them all the information we have on each of the candidates and each of the individuals. And it's really up to them to determine who they want to talk to. Screening committees in the past uh, have decided to interview up to eight, maybe, Buzz. That's the high end. Yeah, that's, that's the high end. And some go to six. What the intention is that they'll, and we always recommend, they bring a minimum of three to you. Uh, some communities go to four. Uh, we'll get a better feel for that, Mr. Chair, and members of the board when we see the candidates. And we will likely know. Um, how do I say this politely, if they're in other searches? Um, so we, we want to protect you against that. If, if somebody is one of your finalists and drops out, we want to make sure you have a backup uh, for that. Uh, so we would recommend to the search committee at a minimum three candidates to the board, uh, potentially four. Some folks have even done five, but that's, that's for a future once we find mm -hmm. out the quality of the candidates coming forward. Um, we organize all of that with the interviews. We are, we, we're in constant contact with all of the candidates. Uh, it's all, as you know, uh, when we're with the screening committee, all of that is confidential information. And it's important for all of those candidates to know that, that word's not out on, not out on the street, that they're a candidate in, uh, in Northboro. So that's important. It's important to us. And we'll, we'll talk to your screening committee once you establish uh, screening or search committee, whatever you determine you want to call it. Um, and we'll, we'll go through that whole process. Um, we will likely be in touch with Becca over the next week or so. We want to start talking to all of you. We want to start talking to the department managers. We want to start talking to whomever else you think we should talk to, whether or not it's a chairman of a planning board or a school committee member or whatever you guys think. Um, we prefer the department heads to be met in person with us. Uh, and we've talked with, with Becca about that. So we'll, we'll work with her to schedule that for a day. Um, and we want to do that relatively quickly because in this 30 day period of the advertisement, we're going to be defining the profile and the challenge statement and all that kind of stuff. So we need to hear from people, the type of person you think is going to succeed in Northboro. And that's from you. And, and Mitch, we talked about this with you before. We want to talk to both Scott and, 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 J and Jason, obviously, but we also want to talk to the two other candidates 
uh, for the board. And I thought you thought that was probably a pretty good idea because they're going to be elected, um, I think. <laughs> so uh, we'll want to talk to them also. So that's all going to be in the next couple of weeks. We're going to set up a meeting with the search committee. Uh, once you tell us who they are and what you want us to do with them and those type of things. So that's all going to be, it's going to get pretty aggressive now that we're uh, hopefully starting the process. But the key, the trigger is for you guys to tell us what you want to do with the advertisement. We gave you some documents. We gave you some comparable data. Uh, it, it's kind of skewed a bit. It's interesting. Uh, you guys have a very good website. Some towns do not. And it's hard to find information. Um, and some people don't like to communicate all that much about where they happen to stand. But this is pretty accurate stuff that we have. Um, some you'll see uh, in some of your neighbors, it's a little lower than both Buzz and I anticipated. Um, and I don't have to tell you this, but there are some other benefits in contracts. We did not touch those. We didn't go near that stuff. So you may see a certain base salary, but there may be some things there that maybe North Pro doesn't even offer. So take it for what it's worth. It's a base salary, and that's that's what we're showing you there. Buzz added in a 2% uh, on, on the 2023 uh, wages for individuals, and that's an assumption made. But typically, it's if it's not a merit increase, it's generally tied to a percentage increase of inflation and those type of things. So we just built that in. So you have those comparable communities. You also see, Mr. Chairman, that we we suggested a uh, range for you guys to think about. Um, and always keep in mind who your competition is. And you, you see, you know who your neighbors are. You know some of the things that have gone on recently. The one of the interesting ones that we, we found was Wayland. And uh, Wayland just went to a town manager form of government. And the last person there, Louise, we knew her, uh, left in 2000. And her salary, you see it, it was uh, rough, roughly around $200,000. We know the new individual who just got in there. He just started in February, and he's in the low twos. So he's comparable with some of those others that you see in that range. So that's information for you. Uh, we had Shrewsbury in there, but Shrewsbury is a much bigger town. Uh, than you guys are, uh, 37,000, I want to say, in terms of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've had a long, uh, not a long standing, but a pretty stable relationship with their manager there. And um, we, we thought that that would, we didn't want to skewer the scale that we gave you. So um, that's up to you to decide. Uh, we're giving you some suggestions and recommendations. And then, Mr. Chairman, we can talk about the screening committee if you want. Or do you want to deal with the ad first? Or? Yeah, I think uh, just in order of our agenda, the ad, ad is first. But uh, you've presented some, some good general information in the process and the timeline, so that's good. I, I had one question as you were beginning to uh, to describe it, and I think you already answered it, which is I wanted to make sure that all of the input that you're gathering is concluded um, well enough before the end of the advertising period so that if potential candidates are identified through that process or the ideal type of candidate and you think of someone that may have not already been in the mix, they, they have the opportunity to send in their application before the deadline. Yep. Tip, uh, Mr. Chairman, typically what we see is if, if we're recruiting somebody, they oftentimes um, submit the last a few days the last week, uh, and, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep you informed uh, along the way uh, how many applicants there are, but um, typically the last weekend, there'll be a flurry of activity, particularly if we're expecting somebody and we check and we see that, that they're not, you know, that they haven't submitted anything yet, we'll um, get after them and ask them, you know, make sure they read remember about the deadline. Um, well, one of the uh, things that uh, we will be um, doing is talking to you folks about the fit of uh, your next TA. And um, we also have a uh, uh, anonymous source, anonymous website, anonymous mailbox that people <clears throat> can put in. We'll give Becca that information. You can put on your website and that sort of thing so that uh, people will send in comments um, about 
sort of uh, what they think, you know, the, uh, the, the sort of the characteristics, the traits of the next person. So we gather uh, information anonymously and we'll provide that to you. Uh, we get, that's one of the key questions we're gonna be asking you folks is what are you looking for in your next TA? And then when we uh, have a, a, a public forum, that's a question we'll throw out to the folks at the public forum is, you know, we'll ideally describe the kind of person you like to uh, see in that role in the future. Perfect, thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Kristen, then Julianne. Um, Bob and Buzz, did you say you wanted to speak to each of us individually also? You did, right? Yeah. And when would you be trying to schedule that? <clears throat> Sooner rather than later. Uh, okay. Some could be this week if we can work around schedules. I mean, we, we can work with you individually. You can work through Becker and give us good contact times. And okay. we can call you, you can call us, but we'll, we'll work through that. But it's going to be sooner rather than later, Kristen. Right. Okay. And um, all right, I'll, I'll ask about the details of that, uh, like in contacting and all that okay. later. Julian? I was wondering, can, could, is it possible to screen share the advertisement statement that we'll be voting on so the public could... They haven't read the packet, they could see it. It's, it is in the packet, which we can get to from the, uh, from the town website. It's rather- the, I, can, I, I mean, I think it might be helpful, but- it, I can do that. At least I can try to do that, let's see. <laughs> Uh, while Mitch is doing that, they just, uh, Christian, to follow up on, on your point, we'll work with Becca to get your, your best um, email and your best um, uh, cell number or whatever, so that, um, you know, we can reach out to you. And typically the conversations are 45 minutes, could, up, could be an hour, depending on uh, uh, what you want to share with us right. in terms of the characteristics and the issues going on in town. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, so I should have up on yep. screen now draft town administrator. I, you know, that's advertisement. I suspect would have been uh, in that line. Um, I'll just scroll through it slowly, so folks at home <clears throat> might be able to scan that. Just uh, first paragraph is just basic facts about the town, population, budget, number of employees, etc. Next paragraph, successful candidate, um, uh, BA or BS required, MPA or MBA preferred, minimum of five to eight years of progressive municipal management leadership experience. Um, salary range here is blank, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Equal opportunity employer and all those things. Uh, contact information is at uh, Bob and Buzz at your firm at, for, for Alan. Um, additional information. You said you'd be setting up a, um, a page on your website with this and um, to send the cover letter and resume and so forth to recruitment at mrigov.com, which is yours. And the deadline, I think you said was May 8th? Correct. Yep. 8th, 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 7th, whatever it is that, that you recommend mm -hmm. is fine. There. Um, Go back up to the top. If it's all right, I will stop sharing because it's harder for me to see everybody else when I'm sharing. <clears throat> but again, this is in our agenda packet, which has been public since Friday. Okay. Good. Uh, any other questions from the board? Comments? Okay. Um, so, Next is to approve the advertisement for town administrator, and that would be with a salary range. Um, based upon the, uh, the comparison that you put together, you're recommending a salary range of 185,000 to 210,000. Um, that's correct, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Okay. 
Um, questions or comments from the board on the salary range, which is really the only thing we haven't discussed otherwise. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's a lot of money, but but it's for to attract a good candidate, it's going to be a lot of money. So that's what yeah. it is, Jason. I, I just note that the the you know the comparable communities that were evaluated in order to arrive at that as kind of a, a result seem very appropriate and reasonable to me. So the range is also appropriate to me. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Thank Becca for that. She those are comps that you guys use a lot, so we we figured we'd use those. Thank you, Becca. Yes. Very good. Any other comments or questions on the advertisement? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move the board vote to approve the advertisement for the town administrator position as presented and to set the salary range at $185,000 to $210,000 as recommended by MRI. Second. Motion made by Jason, seconded by Scott. Any other discussion? All those in favor, Scott. Aye. Jason. Aye. Julianne. Aye. Kristen. Aye. I also vote aye. Vote is unanimous in favor. We have an advertisement. Thank you very much. Next up on our agenda is vote to establish a town administrator screening committee. Um, I always call them search committees, but I know in the open meeting law, they're referred to as screening committees. It really <laughs> doesn't matter what we call it because it's exactly the same thing. Great. Um, so I know, Bob, you had recommended something in the five to nine range um, when um, the four of us, meaning myself, Becca, Bob and Buzz met um, at the end of last week. I, I don't remember the, the mm -hmm. date. Um, we talked a little <laughs> bit about what that makeup might be. And I, I made a suggestion that I thought was um, was well taken. I'll repeat it here, but I'm, I'm open to any, any input at all. I was thinking about, particularly about the election that's upcoming, that we have two members that are going to be departing. We have two members who we can reasonably identify as who will be elected, given the fact that they're uncontested on the ballot. Um, and this process will straggle that that date. So um, while at the same time, there is a value in having a couple of board members on that screening committee, uh, and there's a tremendous value in keeping that committee consistent throughout the whole process. So um, I had the thought of um, naming two <clears throat> board members uh, to the search committee, um, including one departing member, and uh, and naming as an at-large member one of the two uh, future board members uh, so that as of May 9th, the election date, they flip and uh, one of the board members becomes an at-large, continues on, and one of the at-large members becomes a board representative, continues on, and, and the process continues. Um, I, I spoke by text earlier today with Jason, uh, trying to volunteer him for this, uh, but, but Jason is, uh, is heading off into the retirement sunset in the very near future and is anxious to do so. So I didn't want to then ask Scott, um, violating the open meeting law separate. So I, I will, if the board is, is amenable to this setup, I will ask Scott if he is interested. I'll just, fin I'll finish the rest of my thinking there. Bob and Buzz also suggested that we, ask um, rep a representative of both the school committee and the planning board to serve on that. Um, today, I did contact the chairs of those two committees and, and they thought it was a good idea and appreciated being represented. Um, and then to get up to seven, there would be a total of, uh, then there would be a, a two additional at-large members that we would seek. Um, and getting off into the weeds, I was thinking as a way of keeping it as balanced as possible, um, given that sometimes we do have split votes on this board, I was thinking maybe asking Julianne and Kristen to come up with one name and asking Scott and Jason to come up with a name, not today, but you know, for, for some future meeting, um, as a way of trying to have the most balanced search committee possible um, to bring well-qualified and well-respected candidates forward to the board at the appropriate time. Um, that's my that's my crazy idea. I'm, I'm open to input and thoughts on that. Uh, Kristen. So I think you meant, um, well, on the on the document, you have three 
um, at large members. So it would be. So I, I spoke with Laura Zeiden, who was going to be one of the oh, likely. That's one members. of those. Spots yeah. So yeah, exactly. I apologize. I didn't. I didn't go that in that detail. Yeah. Laura no, has no, volunteered no. Um, right. that I'm that if we go with this route. Yeah. Okay. So then there would be two additional okay. at large candidates. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I actually. I'm just going to throw it out there that um, I don't think it's a bad idea to head for the closer to nine. To, so instead of seven doing nine, they said between five and nine, right? And I agree, you don't want it too huge. Um, but I would like to just keep that potentially in the conversation because that would allow us to have more people from other um, groups, like we have a DEIB committee now, right? We absolutely should have someone from that committee. It's really obnoxious not to, right? But is that also just taking up one of the spots of the, and see, and I also didn't realize that we were going to be represented on the search committee. I, I wasn't sure one way or the other how, how that would work. So I was able to easily fill up seven spots without any of the five of us or Laura or Lisa. So I just had a lot of good ideas. I did have um, planning board because that was and school committee because that was on their list. But we have two school committees too. keep in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have regional school committee and then we have the Northboro school committee. And they do very different things and they're both really relevant and they're different people. Um, and we have really great candidates on both those school committees who do very different kinds of things. The high school is extremely different from the Northboro Public Schools. I'm sure it's enough to make the town administrator's head explode sometimes. <laughs> Because it's very complicated. I mean, I don't even know how the superintendent does it because he also has the Southboro Public Schools. So um, there's just a lot of balls to juggle there. So I don't think it's a bad idea to have, you know, both the, the school committees represented. And, um, and then we also have MPIC, which I realize there's could be overlap from planning board or some other committee. Um, but that's also a really hot issue in our town and the, the whole economic development, the whole downtown revitalization, that's really important to a lot of people. Um, and then also, I personally, I've already spoken up a little bit about the library and I don't know if people realize that libraries are really under attack right now because of all the censorship, um, uh, conversations happening and libraries are the the last bastion of defense in a lot of towns. Now we live in Massachusetts and it's not a super, super conservative town by any means, but I love the idea of giving um, someone on the library board of trustees a voice in the conversation too. So that's what I mean. Like, so I could go, if, if there's also gonna be people from the select board on this committee, I could see it definitely being a little bigger. Additional thoughts? Scott. Yeah, some questions for, for Bob and Buzz, because um, some of my thoughts let, was also in the direction that, that Kristen talked about. Um, for participation by members of the select board, have you seen some towns, um, give those spots up to other other representatives knowing that any candidate is going to come ultimately to the select board so have you seen some towns have the screening committee not include any members of the select board yes yep we have we're not judging judgmental either way uh, but we have seen some towns choose what you just said scott and that is not to have the board members on on the screening committee but that is the lot yeah, is the logic there to just maximize the representation from other elements? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. You, and got, then, you know, we made a lot of suggestions of different people. I don't know if you have a business organization, a chamber or something. A lot of towns like to 
branch out a bit and not just have traditional town folks, if you know what I mean, the mm -hmm. people involved in government. <clears throat> Yeah, because uh, there are other players in your community. <laughs> um, so that's just for you to think about. And we can go, by the way, the comment that Kristen made uh, and that we made about five tonight, we, we can do nine. The one the one cautionary note that uh, you read in my notes, uh, Buzz and I put together, um, sometimes it's difficult to get that many people together for a meeting. And if one of the people or two of the people can't make a specific night. Let's say it's a night where you're interviewing candidates. That becomes a problem uh, mm -hmm. for them to participate in the next round, if you will. Uh, so that's just for you to think about. Uh, so uh, some additional questions, a couple uh, elements we haven't talked about yet is the importance of having someone that represents the financial side of things in town in terms of the town administrator's preparation of budget and select board's approval of that. Um, so that's one element I would put into the mix is if, it, if we have the space, um, a representation from uh, one of the financial uh, committees. And then Becca, this might be a question for you is whether you think the importance of representation by personnel uh, whether through the personnel board or something like that, given the <clears throat> managerial and, and oversight of her staff. Um, you know, that's an option for the board to consider. I don't necessarily think it's uh, imperative, um, but certainly if you felt like um, you wanted to have representation from the personnel board, um, I'm sure that one of them would be happy to serve. Um, obviously they are involved in you know, many of the personnel decisions that are made regarding the bylaw. So they're familiar with the process of interviewing and many of them have backgrounds in HR um, mm -hmm. because, you know, they serve on that board. So that may be a benefit to the screening committee, something for the select board to consider, certainly. Okay, yeah, thanks for that that answer. And then finally, uh, uh, Bob, when in your phrasing about then, um, other residents at large, you had mentioned, you know, who who have backgrounds in HR or business and, yeah. and that sort of thing. How important have you seen that in, in these screening committees to have not just, um, uh, uh, yeah, to make sure that the residents represent that sort of skill set? Well, Buzz, you can comment, but we've had oh. great success with residents who I recall one of our committees had, uh, uh, she was the HR director at MITRE Corporation, which is a it's pretty important position. And she was very, very helpful to us. Uh, we've had people and one of our committees buzz from State Street Bank, mm -hmm. very high up at State Street Bank, who was a resident and was concerned about the finances in the community <laughs> and had some opinions of those finances. So. It, it varies, Scott. You, you can you you know your community better than you. You got some very good people, and you know the funny thing about um, what we see in search committees. That's what all they want to do. Look, don't ask me to get involved in some other things, but I want to give back to my community, and I think I can add some value to the search for the new town administrator because I do this. This is my profession, that type of thing. But I don't want to have this be a two year commitment. I, I, I want to give back and I want to get out <laughs> and they, yeah. they appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, if I may, and remember, you know, remember they're all residents, yeah. you know, uh, <clears throat> all the folks that, whether it's a, a, a nine or seven, you know, they're all residents of the community, I would assume. Um, uh, so, you know, that, that that's really the, that's, a, that's an important voice. Um, so wh whether you, you have a, uh, a, a resident that's not serving on any board or, or committee or commission, that's okay too. But, you know, they're all, they all have a stake in the game, so to speak. Yeah. And then, then that's then my final question. I, I promise, uh, is that in terms of those residents at large, are we going to be asking folks to fill out applications or are we just bringing names forward? <clears throat> I think we can we can decide it either way. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I look at this as being a little different than the 
typical committees that we appoint that go off and do their own thing. This is a, a very short term but critical process. Um, I think if we all agree on a different process than the normal advertise for you know for three or four weeks, interviewed by the um, by the interview committee and then names brought up, I think it's fine to do something a little different here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, Jason. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, th I, I think three points that I would like to offer. One is that uh, considering how significant the financial aspect of town government is, I would agree with uh, Scott that uh, a member of one of the financial committees and probably the appropriations committee would be the more appropriate of the two, uh, should be a member of this screening committee. Um, uh, second point is that, um, as Kristen mentioned, there might be other committees or constituencies that uh, that would like to have representation here. Uh, if if we go in that direction, the thing that I would ask is that, um, for example, uh, if a member of the Master Plan Implementation Committee were to be included, it should not be a member who is also a member of an elected board and serving on the Implementation Committee. Um, there should be some other independent, if I, if you, if you want to call it that, representative of of that particular uh, item. And then third, um, uh, to your point, Mitch, about um, the upcoming election and the transition that's going to take in, take place on the board. I, I kind of understand the the problem you're trying to work around <laughs> as far as where those representatives are coming from. But that said, I. Speaking for myself, I would feel more comfortable if the board members who are serving on the screening committee were people who have already been serving on the board and have some direct familiarity with what we've been doing. And, uh, and uh, you know, in, in that case, my suggestion would be Julianne or Kristen would be uh, um, an appropriate person, considering, too, that they've been serving as our interview subcommittee. Thank you. Kristen. Can I ask another question? This is just very basic. Um, what is the search committee time commitment? I guess Bob or Buzz can answer that. And also, uh, and this may have already been stated, but I missed it if it was because there's so many things to be thinking about right now. But like, how long a period of time are we looking at? So those two things. Well, uh, if, if I shot. may. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, initial, there'd be an initial meeting with the uh, screening committee. Mm -hmm. And then uh, really there, uh, there may be one or two meetings between now and uh, June, N uh, not an intense schedule. It could be three, but um, uh, not an intense schedule. But once uh, June hits, in fact, this is a good point, I think, for all of us to to just note now on our calendars, uh, the, the way we've, uh, we've kind of tentatively scoped out a, a timeline, the, um, uh, there'll be several meetings between now and say the beginning of June, but beginning of June, we'll be, we'll be presenting uh, six, eight uh, candidates to the uh, screening committee. And at that point, there's gonna be quite a bit of homework because you're gonna, they're gonna have to go through the, the cover letters, the resumes, the essays, and uh, we'll meet with them to talk about all the candidates and then uh, decide how many, which ones they want to interview. And then there'll be uh, days, uh, afternoons, evenings, perhaps a Saturday uh, of, of interviews. So it'll be a combination of time. So it's, it's, it's gonna be pretty intense the first two weeks in June as we kind mm -hmm. of scope it out. Uh, and then they will, come up with whatever number you want. You may tell them we, we want four, we want three to, you know, as finalists, they, they will come up to the finalists, as we said, in no particular order. They, they won't recommend, you know, A, B, or C. And then you folks are gonna be busy the last two weeks in June. And I strongly recommend we move uh, quickly through June because the last thing we wanna do is get hung up uh, Fourth of July weekend, vacation start in July, all of that. We've had some searches that have gone into July. 
and working around people's vacations can get um, very tricky and it, you know, it can delay the process. So uh, I, I, I trust I answered your question. Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other input, Julianne? Okay, so we have a whole bunch of suggestions here. The first of which I guess would be, <clears throat> do, we, do we want select board members on the committee or not? And if so, one or two? Yeah. I mean, my, my opinion is we should probably have two. Um, I, I think there should be a connection between the board and the search committee. That's been the, I've been on a number of search committees for different positions, including one town administrator a number of years ago, and they all had a member of the, the appointing board, usually two members of the appointing board on that. You certainly can't have three or any situation that could turn into three because then that would be a quorum for us. Okay. But, but can go either way. Um, Julianne, uh, uh, oh, Jason, no, Jason, I, I see Jason. your I see your hand, but um, I, I want to see if J Julianne has anything else to say. Well, I, I just that we we have to decide on that. We have to decide on five, seven, or nine, and the additional suggestions, which would be financial planning, um, the other school committee. But I guess that that is maybe questionable because that they also report to Southboro. Um, but DEIB, and if we're going to discuss all those other committees, including library, given the the percentage of our population being seniors and above, uh, seniors and above, then maybe we should consider Council on Aging. If we're going to consider all these other committees. Okay, Jason. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mitch, can I ask, are you expecting yourself to serve on the screening committee? I was thinking of it. And so we're talking about what second person on the board would be serving with you. Assuming that, that the board was okay with me serving on that, yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I understand the desire to have the screening committee be as broad as possible, but I do think we're working in the wrong direction in terms of size of the committee and Bob, the, Bob and Buzz are getting scared. The concerns <laughs> that our consultants are expressing, particularly with the timeline and the, the summer uh, the impact potentially uh, um, in order to get the work done uh, in a reasonable amount of time and, and not have issues of delays because of, uh, you know, um, certain members of the committee not being available for a particular time. So, um, if there's uh, opportunity along the way in the process, once we get the finalists for some of those other committees, I guess I would question the need to have all of that participation at the screening level. Is it more appropriate for some of that participation to come as part of the public process where we're looking at finalists and then trying to make perhaps some of those additional assessments of the finalists uh, uh, qualities and capabilities with regard to some of those other concerns. And so for that reason, I would perhaps recommend we stay somewhere in the vicinity of seven uh, as a membership. Julianne. I think Jason has a, has a good point that that all of the other committees, which are very important, will have opportunity to have input. And, and um, given where we are in the year, seven, seven does seem more manageable. Uh, Jason. Uh, I think I would suggest that depending on the size of the committee, if there's uh, I think I do feel strongly about having a member of, say, appropriations participate at the screening level. And if the trade-off there is to have only one selectman as opposed to two, then I would make that trade-off in order to have the financial committee involved in the screening process. Kristen? I, um, I was thinking, because the, the uh, Bob and Buzz also recommended um, finance people, so I was looking at the members of appropriations and the finance committees. 
Um, and um, one name in particular stood out to me on the finance committee, the financial, what's it called? We call it the finance committee, but the official name is like. It's financial planning committee or long range financial planning mm -hmm. committee. Yes. Yeah. And they're typically, they tend to be more focused on the capital aspects of the budget, although they can do any kind of analysis or investigation into any financial manner. Yeah. And they, I mean, I know the two of you both came from there and certainly they, um, there are people who are very comfortable with finance and um, understanding someone's qualifications in that financial umbrella. So I, I don't know. I, I just like, like that Bob and Buzz were saying, like, we know the people in this town, like there are certain people in this town who might be really excited to serve on this committee because they have had their hands in lots of different pies in town and and they care. They volunteer a lot because they care about the town. So I don't know. I feel like either appropriations or financial planning would work. Um, I, f I feel like they're sort of the same hat. And I don't think it's a bad idea to have somebody from one of those committees at all. Um, and I don't know that I'm really qualified. I appreciate Jason's comment that I'm the interview committee person, um, one of the interview committee members. And I'm, I'm definitely a people person and I love to meet new people and I love reading essays. So <laughs> that, would, that would be why. And I'm really curious who applies for this. But as far as like Mitch is like, I've been on other, you know, and then you probably do have people in town who have a lot more qualifications than I do. And also my son is graduating from high school in the beginning of June. Ooh. And I suspect I'll be pretty busy with um, stuff, party, <laughs> family things. So um, I, I'm not sure I'm really your best bet, but I appreciate that. Krista, I was thinking you'd be a, a good person because you're also our representative on diversity committee. Um, right, but I haven't actually attended that. any of their meetings okay. because okay. it was, you know, I yeah. had a family thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Certainly, the the recent meetings, I understand that. So, I mean, all, all of all of us serve in multiple capacities in town, so we can do double duty. I mean, in theory, I mean, I'm on the also on the library trustees. So, if you want a, right. a library trustee as well as a board representative, I can fill both if that's important to to the board. Um, Julianne, you're uh, you know certainly a representative on master plan, so you can fill that role as well. Uh, or uh, any any one of us five, we could we could find that. Um, Julianne, did you have, you have your hand up? I, I want to try to reach consensus on this or reach consensus to move on because we have folks what we're waiting to interview. Yeah. But uh, Julianne? So, so to the point of having someone from a financial committee on this, on the screening committee, my, my personal feeling is that financial planning is more appropriate because they do future planning and, and the capital improvement stuff. So um, I, I would think that that would be more of a fit than appropriations. Uh, I have a thought on that, but Jason. Uh, I think Mitch and I maybe have the same thought is that appropriations has responsibility to review the entire budget and make rep uh, recommendations at town meeting on all spending articles, whether they're operational or capital spending. So the financial planning committee serves uh, as kind of a front end uh, review of the capital items, makes its recommendations, and then appropriations kind of uh, takes that lead, um, but also has responsibility for the operational aspects of the budget, which are at least as significant, at least as important, and uh, in my opinion, requires a person from that committee to provide that additional breadth of of review. Yeah, I mean, I I think appropriations is probably a little bit closer to being ideal than financial planning is is the ideal. Um, I think it does make sense. I like the the idea of having someone from either one of those. I don't want to get too into the weeds on it. My personal thought is I think there's some consensus to having somebody representing one of the financial committees on there is ask the two, the two chairs of those two committees to get together and just nominate a person. And 
from my perspective. I don't want to get into any more detail than that. And whoever, you know, assuming they can, they can agree upon themselves one person, I'm fine with whoever that is. Um, you know, sort of the same as, as school committee. I don't want to go picking which school committee or which school committee member, but I, I think just one member of one school committee is fine. I was thinking the K-8 because that's clearly Northboro not to um, belittle the regional school committee at all because they certainly have their hands full and have a lot that they need to figure out. Uh, Scott? Yeah, so if we were targeting seven and if we had a single select board member, then our initial five could be a uh, select board member, planning board member, K-8 school committee member, uh, appropriations or financial planning member, and diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging. And that would leave us two additional residents. Um, if we could bring, yeah, let me just leave it at that, not, not give any variations, but that's, I'm sorry, that Scott, could you repeat that again? I'm, I'm just trying to yeah. switch it down. Yeah, so if we went one member from select board, then planning board, school committee, appropriations, and DEIB, that would give us two more slots for residents and a total of seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it does. Um, I, <clears throat> the way I, I had something similar, which included two board representatives, myself and Julianne, since Kristen has volunteered to not do it, I'm volunteering you. Um, you obviously represent Master Plan, Julianne. Um, uh, a K-8 school committee, planning board, someone of either appropriations or financial planning at their discretion and two at large. So that, that excludes somebody from diversity being officially a member, but I would certainly welcome, um, you know, somebody from that committee applying if they're interested in the at large. I, I think you want to put, I want, I think you want to make DEIB uh, mm -hmm. A required committee, Mitch. Okay. I mean, that's kind of why they exist to help with things like this. Okay. I mean, one of the reasons that they exist. It's a and one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, I, I, I worry a little bit that if you just ask financial planning and appropriations to pick someone, you're just going to get the biggest personality and not necessarily the person who knows the most about finance or how it applies. So I don't know. I, I think this board should probably, and the same with the school committee, like they also should talk about it. I think these committees should talk about it and put maybe one or two people forward, but I don't see it's a bad idea for this board to kind of make the final choice. No, I don't know. All right, uh, Jason, you've had your hand up and then Julie, I, I, you can figure out what we're doing with this. I, I absolutely, uh think that financial planning and appropriations committees are more than capable of selecting a appropriate person who can represent them effectively and who has the availability in the time frame to be able to serve. Um, uh, I, and I don't think we need to override or, or, or choose who's coming from that uh, that area. They can make the selection themselves. Yeah, I, I agree with Jason. Um, and I, I would defer also to the planning board and school committee to choose who they want to represent them, however they want to make that choice. And um, I mean, I, I guess in theory, we could veto. I don't want to veto that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting we actually do. I, I guess we have the authority to do that and I do not want to enact it. So. Right. Mr. Chair, I, I, all I'll suggest is uh, yeah. number one, we've got a couple of people yeah. in uh, in in Becker's waiting room, um, and number two, we got a little time on that. Okay. Remember, we told you we're not we don't yeah. have to meet the screening committee over the next week or two. Yeah. Uh, so you, you guys, you, you've got some good thoughts on it. Right. I think you've got a consensus. I on think so. Probably seven. Yeah. That, but that's up to you. But it, you know, we we don't need the answer tonight. Let okay. me leave it at that. All right. So I think we're 
I think we're very close. I think, I think, you know, one or two board members, um, a little bit of variation on appropriation, financial planning, a couple of at large, but we're, we're basically there, but I, I agree. Maybe we table this to our meeting next Monday and, um, and just find, hopefully finalize it. Then we'll all have some time to think. And then, um, but we'll bring in our first interview. Folks okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So we will continue voting to establish the screening committee next time. And now we will move into interim town administrator interviews. Bob and Buzz, I didn't think ahead of time. You stick around for this? We do. Yes. So if you want us to, if you want uh, information. Yes, and, yeah, very, yeah. very much so. All right. Okay. Um, so our first candidate. Um, that we have is Kevin Flynn, who has patiently been waiting in, in the area for a little while and the attendees. Uh, Kevin, I'm going to bring you in now. I'm promoting you to panelist. And once you're in, if you could unmute yourself and turn on your video. Kevin is upside down. Um, I won't pretend I know how that could happen. <laughs> um, and muted as well. Kevin, if you could unmute yourself. I can't figure it out either. So give me a second. Sure. And let's see. If he's on his phone, I can see maybe why that might happen. Well, I'm going to just flip it upside down and see what happens. So everybody hang on. Sure. Or maybe close your eyes for a second so you don't get <laughs> If things start falling from the ceiling, I'll, get, I'll be really concerned. <laughs> oh. How's that? Better. There we go. You are right side up, yes. sir. Okay. Now okay. we can. <laughs> um, Kevin, welcome to the North Grove Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, my name is Mitch Cohen. I chair this friendly little group. Um, I won't bother uh, asking all of our members to introduce each other because you see all of our names okay. up on the screen. Um, I'll start by asking you to introduce yourself. Um, we're obviously looking for an interim administrator. You you know all that, speaking with Bob and or Buzz. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about you yourself and, and what interests you in this role. Sure. Well, thank you very much for having me. Now that we're all right side up. Um, I'm um, been in the uh, municipal management or uh, parts of municipal government in Massachusetts for, let me see, 1980, 1995, when I came here from New Jersey. Um, so just about running on 30 years um, in various positions, most recently in municipal management jobs, but I've also been a community development director, a city planner, um, run a housing authority um, in neighboring Marlboro for a while. Um, worked in a lot of different communities around the state. Um, I'm passionate about local government. It's something that's very important to me and I enjoy doing. A lot of people get up in the morning and say, oh God, I wish I didn't have to go to work, but I've never had that problem. I always enjoy getting up in the morning. And because I've done a number of different things and have quite a breadth of experience, um, there's, uh, I, I always find something interesting about what's going on uh, in local government, what we're doing that day. And uh, I'm always uh, excited uh, about what I'm doing in, in local government. Um, what drew me to Northboro is um, a couple of things. Uh, one, I'm very familiar with the community, having worked in Marlboro for a while. So I know quite a bit about Northboro. Um, and I was very impressed, uh, as many people are, with your uh, financial management uh, skills. It's a very well, uh, financially, a very well managed community. Um, I'm drawn to it also because you are on the forefront of diversity and inclusiveness, um, which is um, excellent. It's good news, and, and I'm glad to see that. Um, it's a larger community, so it's kind of the next step in my career progression. Um, so it's uh, it's a place that I would I would like to be at, and in, in a lot of ways, it's a lot like the town I grew up in uh, in North Jersey. Um, it's about the same population size. Um, the uh, the uh, per capita income, the uh, median household income is uh, within a few thousand dollars of each other. Um, the the diversity, the uh, demographics of the community is very similar uh, to Verona, and uh, even our school colors are the same. So, uh, my wife, who's a minister, would tell me it's a sign. 
if all those things are coming together. So um, the uh, opportunity to work with the community, even if just for a few months, uh, while you're going through this uh, very important decision, uh, probably the most important decision that a select board ever makes is, is hiring its new administrator or a new town manager. And to be able to assist you with that and be part of that um, is a challenge that I look forward to. And it gives me a chance to use uh, uh, my skill and experience to help the town for, with, that pro with that process. Thanks. We each have a, a question that we'll go over to room to ask. Um, I, mine is first. Um, as the um, interim town administrator in Northboro, tell us a little bit about your goals and objectives that you hope to accomplish during the time you're assisting the community um, in this type of transition. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, um, the first rule of being an interim is kind of like the doctor's Hippocratic oath is do no harm. So uh, the first most important thing is to maintain the continuity of operations in the community, but uh, not just to be a caretaker, um, but also to um, be able to move projects forward that are in hand. I know that, that um, uh, John has, has um, done a lot of work uh, getting things ready for the next person. He's not a town administrator who leaves things undone as he's going out the door. So um, he's put a lot of things in play we want to keep those things moving forward. We want to maintain our forward motion. Um, so that's important. This will be the year for your community. This is the year of three administrators. Um, the one who's outgoing, the interim who's here for a limited amount of time, and then your permanent administrator. And that can be very stressful for a community, but also for uh, particularly for the employees and the boards and committees, because they're trying to adjust to the changing players, changing in particular as a manager, and uh, they want to be reassured much of the time. So you want to maintain, uh, it's important to work closely with the managers as an interim um, and to work uh, closely with communication uh, with your staff. You want them to, um, to be, uh, understand what's going on. They're going to be wondering, is this the person do, you know, is his decision going to last? Is this going to, is this some just a temporary thing? Um, so it's, it's important to work closely with them to be that uh, calm presence um, and to um, uh, keep projects moving forward um, for the community. Um, next question. Have I answered your question? Yes, th thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, Christian, I think you're up next. Buzz will tell you, before we go, Buzz will tell you and Bob that I sometimes talk longer than the allotted time. So if I'm going too long. <laughs> you can go know, like this. We, we, yeah, we started, we started Buzz, late, so there, like there's this, no real talk work. <laughs> I know. And we're, we're running a little late anyway, so I don't want to go uh, over, but it's important that we had this chance to talk. So I'm sorry. Next. Okay. Um, how do you see the relationship between a successful interim town administrator and the select board evolving over the weeks and months of your engagement in the community? How will you communicate and inform the board of information we need as um, the policy board in Northboro? Um, the first thing I always do is meet with the members of the board uh, individually and have a conversation we spoke earlier uh, during the um, earlier part of the meeting, you were talking about Bob and Buzz having conversations with the board members. <laughs> it's important for the interim also to have a conversation with the board members so they understand what their expectations are for this period. Some boards are uh, have very definitive ideas about what they want to accomplish uh, during the interim period. So I would want to be meeting with each of you. Um, to understand what it is you're looking for to accomplish, what do you want to achieve in the next four or five months, uh, six months, however long it takes. Um, I think Buzz and Bob has suggested four to five months, but it sounds from the earlier discussion this evening, we're talking a bit longer than that. That's fine. Um, or could go longer than that, and that's fine. Uh, as far as communication goes, I, I provide uh, written reports uh, every week to the board of what's been accomplished and what's been going on. But I also make frequent use of email or phone calls um, to talk to board members to keep you, them informed. Um, I know from experience that everyone is always asking the select board, did you know what's going on? Um, or has they have the uh, administrator talked to you about what's been happening down here? So it's very important <laughs> that we keep those, uh, keep the board informed. Um, and so I do, uh, you know, make a, a practice of doing that. I provide you reports, but I also uh, get in touch with you directly 
uh, to keep you informed about important events or what's uh, what's progress is being made on different issues. And we will together identify what the, the major accomplishments are that you would like to see um, uh, achieved during the interim period. Thank you. Uh, Julianne, I think you're up next. Hi, Mr. Flynn. So my question is, um, could you talk about your experience in other communities as an interim administrator? And if you um, had any particular successes you'd like to talk about or any problematic areas that, that you encountered? Most of the time, if you from my resume, you'll see that mostly I have been a, a full-time uh, administrator, but I have been interim before. And in that interim role, um, the most important thing, we had a couple of problems. One was the uh, there was a lot of turnover uh, in that community. I don't want to pin anybody or name anybody specifically, but there was a good deal of turnover in a particular community um, that there was uh, the prior administrator had left under some duress. Uh, the town clerk resigned. Um, the tax collector resigned. The treasurer resigned. It was a, a lot of loss of institutional memory. So uh, a primary uh, responsibility was filling those slots. Temporarily, I used people from other communities that we were able to bring in or a consulting basis and while we were going through the hiring process and the final appointments. Um, we also had a problem in that community with um, the collector had not been sending out the tax bills in a timely fashion. There were a lot of problems with collections um, and we straightened that out. This is not a problem that you have. Um, but in that community, um, there was over a million dollars of, of revenue that was um, not being collected in a timely fashion. So we had to um, move quickly. Um, and I brought in some extra help to process the tax payments, uh, make sure that the bills were out and give proper credit to all the taxpayers who, some of whom had paid their bills who were not getting the proper credit. So that was kind of a, a difficult period. Did Thank I, you. Is that what you were looking for? Yes. Thank okay. you. Jason. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, in your opinion, what qualities and professional experience are necessary to succeed as an interim in any community? Um, it's important to have uh, versatility. Um, uh, I think that um, a, a good interim is, of course, knowledgeable about all the various aspects of local government. Um, I think it's also important that they're able to um, take on unexpected things. They're coming in in the middle, so being able to adapt quickly and to come up to speed quickly is is important skill for them. Um, I think uh, I mentioned earlier communication is key. That's uh, you know they need to. Uh, they're only going to be there a short time. It's important that they are open with people and transparent, and that they're communicating uh, with the. Uh, various department heads and, and uh, the uh, boards about uh, what they're trying to accomplish and what their responsibilities are and what their expectations are, um, which have been worked out with the Board of Selectmen. Um, I think that I have those skills um, because having worked in some of the smaller communities where you do everything, um, I not only have a breadth of knowledge, but I have a depth of knowledge. Um, and I've literally been the person in some communities who put the flag at half staff when necessary or shoveled the sidewalks or shoveled out the front of the town hall, all the way up to making the entries in the accounting system uh, for the tax collections I mentioned earlier, uh, managing the Vader system uh, for the town or providing um, financial uh, response, taking on res financial responsibilities that would have been done by the treasurer, the accountant, the collector. Um, so I think, um, that, uh, those are some key items. Um, I think also an ability, a willingness to be open and to listen to people. Um, it's important to gather information from people um, before making important decisions. And um, uh, so I, I make a special effort to reach out to people to hear, to, um, on, uh, to listen to what their concerns are and to uh, get as much information beforehand before I make decisions or recommendations to the board. Thank you. You're welcome. And Scott. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Mr. Flynn. 
Uh, my question is, uh, if appointed as the interim town administrator, how would you quickly build the trust and confidence of the staff and the board? And what would your leadership style be without the authority of being a full town administrator? Um, how would you build, you know, start off and build that confidence? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mentioned about meeting with all the board members first to uh, immediately to um, understand where they're coming from and what their concerns are, um, what their priorities are for the next few months and for the coming years. So we're in the best position um, when we turn it over to the new permanent administrator. Um, but I also would be meeting with all the department heads and I would make it a point to meet with the various committees, uh, with the planning board or the redevelopment authority or uh, DEIB or um, conservation and uh, different departments um, and, and take an uh, uh, some time to um, understand what their concerns are, what their priorities are, what things that they see it need to be done as soon as possible. So there's some overlap here a bit with what was discussed earlier this evening about uh, meeting with the department heads to understand where we're going. When you're there for a limited time frame, you know, you're trying to uh, leave the town in the best possible position. So it's important that you understand what it is that, that the department heads uh, are thinking about for their priorities. And I think that that meeting with them, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication is very important to that, um, to gaining their trust. Um, I know that um, in past experience, um, uh, there's a story when I was in Southbridge, um, I had a very skeptical DPW uh, director and uh, he said, oh, another one, you know, probably doesn't know anything. And I made it a point to meet, to go out with him on projects and, and uh, um, not just meet in his office, but to see when they were, you know, reconstructing roads. And in this case, they also run the water and sewer plant and um, uh, some other projects that they had in mind. And, uh, while we were there, um, he became more and more impressed that I actually knew, uh, was familiar with, you know, the terms of the road. I said, well, this is a reconstruction project. What's your base going to be here? What's your, what's your top code going to be? What kind of mix are you using? Um, and so on. What are the, you know, talk in his terms, talk in his language. And because I was able to do that, he was actually um, became my best supporter. Uh, he started as my biggest skeptic. And uh, when I left, he um, uh, actually had uh, a project underway. He um, removed part of, they were removing some old trolley tracks from the center of town and he, he had it sliced up. He knows that I'm a, a train rail fan and he had the trolley sliced and presented to me um, as I was leaving to say, this is to remind you of us. Um, and he, he made it a point to say, you know, this is a guy who I thought, oh God, you know, another one, they don't know what they're doing. And actually it turned out he was pretty knowledgeable and I really uh, enjoyed working with him. Um, I took that as one of the greatest compliments that I, I you know, in my career. That some, I brought somebody around who really was non-believer. Uh, you know, oh, these management types, they don't really know that much. Um, sometimes we do. All right, thank you. Um, that concludes our, our prepared questions. I, I guess I had one, one item that just didn't come up, um, which is your availability. And we're looking for an interim that will be working for us full time, roughly 40 hours a week for, mm -hmm. um, for the duration. Want to make sure you're available for that? Yes. Um, and I'm available the day after Easter. I said before, my wife's a minister. So Easter is kind of a, an important uh, date for us. But yeah. Understood. So in a week's time. Yes. Great. So, well, thank you all very much. It's a pleasure to meet you. It was also enjoyable watching the earlier part of the meeting to see that's where you get to see uh, how the board members work together. And um, uh, Bob and, and Buzz were right. You know, it's a good board. You can see that from the way that they're working together. So uh, nice meeting well, you. And thank you for fun. that. <laughs> <laughs> thank Take you. care now. Okay. Thank you very much. You're thank welcome. You. Good night. Okay. All right, uh, that concludes our first of three interviews. Next up, I think we have David Marciello, who is waiting. So uh, David, I'm gonna bring you in, promoting you to a panelist, and if you could unmute yourself and turn on your video. Unmute. 
Mute. Start video. All right. Oop. I hear you. Now I see you. I, I don't see me yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there oh, I am. Okay. Um, we, we all right. See. I apologize for uh, the little bit of the delay. Um, oh, I had texted um, Buzz and Bob and told them that I would pull the earbuds out. And um, I was just waiting to see when the last gentleman left. And as soon as I saw him leave, I had to, you know, do our thing. So I, I didn't feel it was, I didn't feel it was, you know, appropriate for me to be, you know, listening in on your meeting. So, so there you go. Very well understood. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mitch Cohen. I chair the North Pro Board of Selectmen, uh, soon to be renamed the Select Board, we hope, in a couple of weeks time. Uh, and I want to welcome you um, to our meeting and uh, appreciate your interest in um, uh, the town interim town administration. So I'll ask. I'll start by just asking you to introduce yourself, uh, say Thank a little you. bit about yourself, and, and what interests you in this role. Thank you. Um, my name's Dave Marciello. Um, Becca and I have been associated before. Hi, Becca. Nice to see you again. Um, I. Uh, I am an attorney. I have my master's in public administration. I have my bachelor's in um, political science. I have approximately 15 years uh, direct experience in public administration and 26 years as uh, an employment and municipal and land use lawyer. Um, so I come with a, a pretty varied um, you know, bag of tools. Um, and it has served me very well. Uh, I, I've used it to um, write uh, special home rule legislation. I've used it to find the loopholes and and you know put the position the town in the best position. And I know we only have a half hour, but I could give you all sorts of examples how I at one point in time turned a. a um, $18,000 DEP fine into millions of dollars worth of uh, revenue for the town. Um, it, you know, that, that that just comes with having all of that background. Um, what interests me in Northborough is, um, well, I, I have a connection to the town. Uh, my parents live there. My sister lives there. Um, my nephew and his family lives there. Uh, I have friends there. Uh, you all probably uh, remember Terry Gianetto. Uh, you know, I know her as Terry Mahoney, known her for 50 years, should hate me for saying that. Um, but uh, it, it basically checks off all of the boxes of everything that that I look for in a town. Um, you're financially stable. You're, you're politically stable. Um, I, I love your, your inclusiveness. Um, you know, it, and, you know, after a little time away to take care of my in-laws, uh, I spent about three and a half years taking care of them. COVID's now over. They're now healthy. I'm ready to get back into the swing of things. And um, to be completely upfront and transparent, I'm hoping that this would end up being a three to four month interview um, that you'd appoint me as the interim and, you know, you end up seeing me for three months liking all the things that I can do, liking the way that I interact with the citizens and the staff. And, um, you know, I, I put my name in, in, the, um, in the hat for the full-time job and you appoint me for that too. So, you know, full transparency, I'm hoping that you'll, you know, have, you know, a three or four month interview with me. Thank you. Um, we each have a, a question that will go around the room, virtual room, and, and I'm up first. Um, as an interim town administrator in Northboro, tell us a little bit about what you, um, about the goals and objectives that you'd accomplish okay. uh, during that transition time and how you'd accomplish those. That's an interesting question because as an interim, um, my goals and objectives are to make sure that, you know, I, I don't come off the tracks. Uh, make sure the town continues moving forward with all the things that it needs to move forward. Obviously, initially you get town meeting and then you have to implement all of the uh, warrant articles once, you know, that starts rolling out. So, you know, you have to start taking everything that passes a town meeting and, and put them into into a play. But my most pressing thing is to get to know everyone. Uh, make sure that they know that this transition, whether it ends up being me or somebody else, um, goes 
swimmingly, smoothly, easy, um, because it's, it's a difficult time. And um, aside from that, you know, my, my main objective is to do whatever it is to keep the wagon wheels on the wagon, because as an interim, I don't want to ever undertake any new policy, you know, unto myself, unless it's something that you folks have, have started out. If you've put something in play, I'll carry it to fruition. And if I may, for one second, I was an interim in Lunenburg and this question was asked of me. And I, I said, matter of factly, I'm not going to implement anything as an interim um, because it's it's not my place. I mean, it, it's, it's my, my job is to make sure that you folks, you know, keep moving forward and everything works perfectly. Um, but something came up, uh, something came up that, you know, it was a, as you saw in my cover letter, it was the the perfect storm. I, I was there two days and we were planning on the treasurer leaving to go on a family medical leave for, for pregnancy leave. And so we we're plan planning for that. And we already had the assistant accountant out. What we didn't have is the accountant's mother take gravely ill and the accountant immediately put in for family medical leave. And once that happened, we had one person to do all the functions, and that was the assistant treasurer. And she said, no way, Jose, and, and quit. So two days in with no institutional knowledge, without even knowing where the files were, basically, I had to come up with a plan to um, get all of the town's financial functions, payroll, collections, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, everything, treasury, um, all taken care of. We didn't miss a single warrant. We didn't miss a single payroll. I had it up and running in two days just because of, you know, working in the field for so long, knowing enough people, I was able to cobble together people that were um, certified in the municipal finance realm. So we didn't miss a beat. So my plan was to never do anything but you can't go through life with blinders. <laughs> and, you know, that was thrown on my plate. And as soon as that was thrown on my plate, um, you know, it, it, it opened the cork. I then started having people run in my office saying, oh, well, you put all these people in place, you should probably put someone in my office and put someone in this department. And, you know, that was a difficult position to be in. And I, I stood my ground. I, I said, listen, I got interviewed and I said, I would not put any permanent hires in place. It's not my place. I'm an interim. You know, let, let the, the next administration do that. And I met with the selectmen and, you know, they agreed with me. They agreed to me that, you know, uh, you know, I really shouldn't be backfilling positions and hiring people because it wasn't necessary. I was an interim and that wasn't my place. Thank you very much. Uh, Kristen, you're up next. Kristen. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> I, had to find uh, I apologize. Um, <laughs> I had, some, I had sometimes to find we'll in, introduce each other, but uh, yeah. but but since all the names are here, the I, names are there. I just had to find them. it on the screen who I was looking <laughs> yeah. at. So hi, thanks hi. for coming. Um, so how do you see the relationship between a successful successful interim town administrator and the select board evolving? over the next few weeks and months and how would you communicate and inform us um, okay. as necessary? Okay, if you let, give me a second, I'm gonna jot down because it's a two part. You have communication and interaction. Okay. Relationship. And relationship, thank you. All right. Um, the relationship is professional, symbiotic. Um, you know, we, we need to be able to communicate incredibly efficiently and effectively. Um, I have no, uh, you know, background with you. You have no background with me. So we need to meet right off the bat. We need to sit down. We need to hammer out what all the, the important things are um, individually for one select person, as well as, you know, uh, globally for, for the whole board and, you know, master plan and, and obviously I don't want to put a monkey wrench into anything. So I need to know what, what we're going forward with, but I also need to know what's the hot issue for any individual select board member, as well as 
the town. And of course, I've done a little bit of my research and I, I know a few of the hot buttons. Um, let's see, I, I wrote one down was um, the, the castle, the, the White Cliffs, the White mm -hmm. Cliffs. And another one is the, um, uh, the traffic, uh, you know, in, in a certain area down Route 20. So to answer your question directly, I'd meet with all of you. I'd meet with you individually. I'd, I'd want to get a, a, a understanding of what all of that stuff is. But then, and this is no different than what I always do. I'd, I'd set up meetings with all the staff. I'd set up meetings with all the all the department heads. We'd have monthly meetings. We'd also have meetings that that came up based on a project. And that flows straight through to, as, as Buzz and Bob have heard me say this a, a hundred times, I have a methodology. I, I take a big whiteboard and I put it in my, my room. And then that whiteboard has all of my projects or your projects going forward with timetables and, and what's the next step and what do we need to do. And that whiteboard transfers into my weekly report. So a miniature version of that gets presented to the board and then that gets discussed at the meeting and, and you folks have it in real time. Um, and that way you can take uh, appropriate measures to redirect me or take a vote on something or, or move something forward or, you know, put something into the back burner. So that way that whiteboard keeps everything, you know, moving in, in real time. And that's how it communicate with, the board weekly, but communication isn't just reports and ledgers. I, I walk around the town hall every morning, say hello to everybody, introduce myself to them. I go to all the meetings. I don't care if it's a planning board meeting. I don't care if it's the conservation meeting, school committee, finance committee, or um, allocation board. Uh, you know, I, I go to all the meetings. Um, and I, I realize it's not a 40 hour job. I mean, even interim, it's more than 40 hours because I have zero institutional knowledge. So, you know, I, I, I have to get those relationships built and, you know, relationships, you know, build trust. And that's why I would do it. And trust helps a symbiotic relationship move forward. So um, let's see, that was communication, interaction, and relationship. I, I think I hit them all. I do. Um, I think you got them all. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So No, thank you. That was, that was a very important question. And the reason I say that is because as an interim, you, you have to build those relationships. I, I have zero you know, institutional knowledge and I have zero relationships. So I, I have to take more of, of an effort to make sure that everyone is comfortable um, and, you know, you know, we understand each other very clearly. So yeah. I, I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Julianne, you're up next. Julianne, I'm let me find you there. Oh, you're down there. Everyone shifted. You, you played musical chairs on me. You're now at the bottom. You were at the top before. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. Well, hi and welcome. And hi. my question is about, um, if you would please talk about your experience in other communities as an interim or okay. as a as a permanent person, and you did okay. already, I think, touch upon um, yes, yes. problems that happened in Lunenburg that you right. solved by by your contacts and good communication. But maybe you could talk a little bit about what it, do you see any problems that would face any interim administrator that yes. is, in a more general way. Absolutely. Um, and at the end, if, if you're uh, so willing, I'll, I'll kind of go on a little bit of a tangent and tell you a little bit about a scenario that happened in a town that I worked for for 10 years. Um, and I think it kind of brings everything back around. So your direct question was, what do I think uh, any general issue could be with, with an interim? It's the uncertainty. Um, and it, as I said, I'm transparent and I, I'm letting you know that I would hope that I'm appointed and then everyone knows I'm, you know, trying to become a full-time, but that doesn't necessarily help anyone with their trepidation. You know, they, they're going to be wondering what's he going to change? How, how is he going to do things? I mean, your, your town administrator had been there for a long time. The one before him had been there for a long time. So there's been stability and everyone knows what that was you know it's a new teacher walking in and the new teacher the class doesn't know 
how to react to that teacher, doesn't know what the, you know, lesson's going to be, are, they, are we going to change things? So that's kind of the general problem that all interims will have. And the way I would approach is what I said in the first um, question. Um, you know, my relationship and my, my leadership style and Buzz and, and Bob have heard this a hundred times. In Millbury, out of my own pocket, I spent over $2,000 twice to, to host a, um, a, a holiday party for every staff member. And I catered it. Uh, we, they had a mansion and I rented out the mansion. I catered it. I brought in um, a bartender. I brought in a DJ. I brought in a police uh, a detail. And it was open to anyone that that worked for the town. And I, I did this because th there was a lot of, you know, no one really kind of crossed lines. You know, this group didn't deal with that group and that group didn't deal with this group. And, you know, there's nothing better than than having, you know, a, a just a social gathering to, to kind of break that ice. And, um, you know, I, I think that that was helpful because after that, you know, people then started talking to one another at the water cooler and departments were, were more, it wasn't like your group and my group. And, and I feel that, you know, having those types of personal friendships help with the, the professional um, symbiotic relationship. Um, and if I might, this is the scenario I was talking about in, in Rehoboth. Right before we printed the warrant, we're talking last minute, right before we printed the warrant, a, an application came in for a cell tower that was going to be built on private property 50 feet from the side of someone's bathroom window in a residential area. And this monopole was going to be in a residential area right outside someone's bathroom. And it was causing a, a huge stir. Well, I, I saw an opportunity as an attorney, as a land use uh, you know, attorney, and I immediately rezoned the, the overlay to include all of the um, town property for an as matter of right for cell towers. And we put that on the warrant and it passed. And the reason we did that was because now we could build a cell tower on on town land in the manner that we wanted, we could put it zigzagged in the back of the woods. So it wasn't like a, a bowling alley. You couldn't see it from the street, you know, meander the driveway so you can't see it. Set it way back in the woods, make it look like, like a pine tree so it doesn't stand out. And so it wasn't in someone's side yard. It wasn't in a neighborhood. Nobody was worried about it because it was tucked way in the woods and the town collected all the revenue on it. So it was a win-win for everyone. And that's the type of thing that, that, that I try to do. I try to see, try to see a, a problem or an issue as an opportunity. And I, I could give you a hundred examples, but I'll just leave it at that. And, and Buzz and Bob have heard the examples over the years. And I'll just leave it at that. Trust me, th there's a lot of examples like that. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank uh, you. Jason, Jason, you're up next. Oh, hello. Hi, hello, Jason. Try to help you find me on the grid. Here. Thank you. Yeah, that was helpful. That was helpful. <laughs> uh, could you tell me, in your opinion, what qualities and professional experience are necessary to succeed as an interim in any community? Interim. See that that's the key. Interim. You need to have someone who has. Uh, my my comment before many tools in the toolbox. You have to have a lot of diverse experience and knowledge you have to be able to hit the ground running because what i did in lunenburg was with zero institutional knowledge i didn't even know where the files were and neither did anyone else there was no one there to tell me where to find these things i didn't have passwords for for people's computers you know i mean i had to literally just reinvent the wheel overnight and keep the keep the the place moving forward so someone who's an interim has to have all of that experience and knowledge and education and also contacts. You know, I, I know a lot of people in, in the area that if there ever was a problem, I could pick up the phone and, and find someone that could find someone that could find someone. Um, I worked in that area. So and I, I know people in that area. So what is important with an interim? You have to be familiar with 
the, the situations that you're dealing with. You have to be familiar with the community and, and the general community. And you have to have the, the, the knowledge and experience to be able to, 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 to not be thrown off because things are going to happen. Who would have ever imagined that, that you know, complete, uh, you know, perfect storm? I've never seen it before, and I, I don't know of another example of it happening. So, you know, I don't want it to ever happen again. Let's put it that way. Thank you. Thank you. And Scott, your turn. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Mr. Scott. Marciano. Hello. Um, my question is, uh, and you've, you've touched on this a bit, is as the interim, how would you quickly build the trust and confidence yes, of the staff? Yes, yes and 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 the board and you know how would your leadership style be without that yes. full authority of the permanent town administrator i'm glad that you said the full authority because that's it that's the key my authority flows from you and and, and people need to understand that i'm not there to change anything i'm there to, to for a, a smooth transition i'm there to make sure that everything happens, you know, easily. And, you know, as, as I noted, I need everyone to, to, to have that understanding. You know, it's a lot of empathy because people are going to be very concerned and afraid. Um, you know, th th they've been in a very comfortable situation for many, many years. Both of your prior administrators were there for a long tenures and Buzz and, and Bob can tell you that isn't what happens nowadays. It's two, three, four years, and that's it. And, and you know, having someone there for a long period of time gives comfort. And that is what needs to be um, understood. And so my leadership style is going to be, I'm going to listen eight times more than I speak. I'm, I'm going to be very empathetic. I'm, I'm going to make sure I hear because, you know, I, I, again, I don't have any relationships. So I have to work twice as hard to understand what someone's saying. Someone told me once a long time ago, it was, it was a, um, someone who's a, a really good salesperson, outside salesperson. And I, I've taken this and, and used it in, in my helping me through situations in my life. If someone says something three times, you need to stop. And you need to understand that they either have it unresolved in their head well, this is something they want you to know. They want you to hear it. So you have to be able to catch that they've said it three times because they may not say it in the same way. They may couch it three different ways, but you need to catch that, that this is really important to this person. And whether they're trying to resolve it in their head or whether they want to make sure that you understand them, you have to pause and receive that. And so that's something that's that's been very helpful to me. And I'm going to ramp that up tenfold because again you know in a very short order i have to come up to speed and understand everyone's to use a you know a euphemism everyone's love language you know i need to understand how they uh, how they uh, effectuate their their issues and how they talk about their things and and how they you know what's really really important to them even though they may not be saying what is really, really important to them. Not everyone is blunt like me. You know, I'll, I'll tell you exactly, this is what's important. Some people, you know, just gloss over it and you have to kind of grab it. So I, I hope I um, answered your question, but that's where I'm going to be at. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. That uh, concludes no, our pre-prepared questions. Okay. Um, I've got a, a couple more actually. One that just, just struck me, I hope you don't mind it. And if you don't want to answer, that's okay. No, please, resume, I'm, I'm an open book, whatever yeah, you want to ask. Your, on your resume, you list for the for the dates of tenure for the various positions contracted next to, usually I yes. see the dates that somebody worked. Are, yes. they, are those the same? Yeah, yes. With the exception okay. of Millbury, I, I left Millbury early. Um, and th there was uh, a, a disagreement between me and Millbury and... Um, we were coming up to the uh, the budget time, and it was real clear that you know by the time my contract would have concluded, my budget would have put been put in place and being implemented. And so 
um, we approached each other and we agreed that it was probably they wanted to start with a different approach. And so in order to do that, we came to uh, an agreement that I would leave early. They would pay me all of my contract. And um, there was, you know, nothing that I lost. I didn't, I mean, they even paid for me to go to the ICMA conference that year. So, so it was a, a symbiotic, you know, relationship going out the door. You know, they wanted me to leave early and they paid me to leave early. So I was okay with that. But then, you know, the wheels fell off the bus, COVID hit. Um, and once COVID hit, things went completely sideways. And, and once COVID hit, my in-laws got very ill. Um, and, you know, it, it took a while to get them healthy again. And I was very fortunate in that, uh, you know, as an attorney, I, I could work on my own hours and still be the, the person for the family that was taking care of them. Um, and now that, you know, they're completely healthy and I'm ready to get back into the, into the ball game. And here we are. I appreciate the, the detailed no, explanation. You. No, I, I appreciate it. Good. Um, my last question is we, you know, we're looking for someone that will be a full-time administrator. Yes. Um, and I'm curious, just want to make sure you're available for that. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and you'd be available in the very near future to begin. If, if you, um, you know, as long as you don't mind a wrinkled suit, I can start tomorrow. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I haven't been to the, I haven't been to the dry cleaner with my suits yet. So aside from that, um, I, I'm, I'm an attorney and as Buzz and, and Bob know, I'm also a contractor. So I've kept these jobs so that I can be very flexible because I want to get back into, into the game. And uh, so I've made it so that I literally could close up shop and, and be available at the drop of a hat. And um, I think I had noted earlier that I understand this is not a 40 hour job. This is not a 40 hour a week job. This is the first couple of weeks. I mean, my wife will tell you, I was in Lunenburg probably 70 or 80 hours, literally at the desk, 80 hours. And that's not commuting time. That's at the desk. That's not taking stuff home. That's at the desk. That's in the meetings. That's meeting with people. That's going into the community. That's attending community uh, events because you have a lot of stuff to learn in a short amount of time. And, um, uh, I, I get that it's it's not you know a nine to five job nor is it an hourly wage and and I'm willing and able to do that. Thank you very much. Well, thank uh, you, David. I appreciate your time and your interest. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. And I don't know if we'll be making a decision later this evening or in the very very near future, but but uh, quite soon. So uh, I appreciate that. Um, in the event that you need references, you know, I, I can give you local people, I can give you of, officials, I can give you uh, elected officials, uh, I can give you people, staff members and department heads and citizens in your own town that know me personally, know my work ethic, know my achievements. So I can give you a laundry list of people that, you know, just give me a 15 minute head start and I can write up a list for you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye now. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, next up on our list is Bob Reed, who I do not see in there. Uh, Bob, have you been in uh, conversation with him? Yeah. He, he just informed me that uh, for whatever reason, he was, he was able to see what was going on. Okay. So he dropped off. Okay. And said to call him. So I'll, I'll okay. give him a ring. Sure. <laughs> I appreciate that. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Bob. He's logging in, Mitch. Perfect. Thank you very much.
Okay, I see a Robert Reed now in the participants participants window. I assume that is Bob. I'm going to bring you in, promoting you to panelist. And if you could uh, unmute yourself and turn on your camera once you're in there. Hi there. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Robert, do you prefer Robert or Bob? Bob. Bob it is. Okay. Um, my name is Mitch Cohen. I chair the North Grow Board of Select and soon to be renamed, hopefully, the uh, Select Board. Um, I won't bother asking our other members to introduce each other because you can see all, all the names on the screen and you're going to meet them in a couple of minutes anyway. Um, and so what I'd like to do is, is ask you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about why you are, uh, about your level of interest and, and what interests you in becoming our interim town administrator. Okay, I can give you a little bit of background. I uh, would say my experience in local government first started when I was on the staff of uh, what was the Mass League of Cities and Towns. This was before it became the MMA. And um, I was just very impressed with the people that I met, the issues that they dealt with, the immediacy of it. And part of my responsibilities with the Mass League of Cities and Towns was helping to staff the meetings of the Managers Association. And likewise, I was just very impressed with the personnel, uh, the issues that they were dealing with, how they dealt with those issues. And I decided that that's what I wanted to do. After I left the League of Cities and Towns, I worked for the city of Worcester, where I'm originally from Worcester. Went back to school at Clark University, got the MPA, which I knew I would need. And then when I graduated, applied for the job in Sutton and started this career. It Like a lot of people, it hasn't really followed the career path that I anticipated. There have been highs and lows and a few detours, but I guess that's how you learn. Um, my last community, full-time community was Leicester. As I said, I'm originally from Worcester, so I thought that was a particularly good fit for me. And I was there nine years, retired from Leicester. Um, you know, I think retirement is one of those things that you don't really understand until you're there. I thought I was ready for it. I had the <laughs> books to read and the projects and the house projects and so forth. But after a few months, uh, all of that was getting old and there was something missing. And uh, a few months later, the clocks changed. It was dark at 430. And I don't think you really anticipate uh, how long winter is while you're working because you're busy. And um, out of the blue, I got a call from the town manager in Southbridge who was leaving, going to another community. He had gotten my name from a colleague. Well, Bob Reed just retired and maybe he'd be interested in the interim position. And I went to Southbridge and met with him in his office. And Chris was telling me the issues before the town, the problems, the things that needed to be done. And it was interesting while I was sitting there, it was just all coming back to me and I felt energized. And that's the way it's been with these interim positions. If I could just, one other anecdote, what I was, Working for Southbridge, I went to the MMA annual meeting and I happened to bump into a gentleman who had been our longtime labor counsel. He said, Bob, how are you doing? How's retirement? What are you doing? And I talked to him about the interim position in Southbridge and how good it was for me and how I just felt, you know, energized with the position. And I always remember what he said. He said, that's why I won't retire. The work keeps me young. So reason I mention that is it, it, the interim positions have been good for me, both professionally and personally. Thank you very much. Um, so we each have a question to ask you, and uh, we'll go around the virtual room and do that. And I'm up first. Um, as an interim town administrator in Northboro, tell us a little bit about your goals and objectives that you hope to accomplish during the time you're here and assisting uh, the community through the transition. Well, I think the first responsibility of the interim, and it's been my goal in the towns that I've been interim in, is just to make sure the organization doesn't skip a beat and to make sure the transition goes as smoothly as possible. I think the first thing I want to do, both from you and department heads and staff, of course, is to learn what's time sensitive, what needs to be addressed right away, whether it's contracts or deadlines that you have, grants, et cetera, and make sure that those deadlines are met. And then following up on things that are less time sensitive and getting involved in and continuing the projects and the issues that are going on in town. Um, I mean, my approach to the interim position has been the same as if I were the full time administrator, um, the same 
I guess you'd call it dedication, the same application to the position. And I think if you were to talk to selectmen and department heads that I've worked with in the towns where I've been interim, they would they would say the same thing. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Christian, you're up next. Hi, so um, how do you see the relationship between a successful interim town administrator and the select board evolving over the time of your engagement in the community? How will you communicate with us and inform us of information we need as the policy board here in Northboro? Yeah, well, um, very good question. I think my first response would be, uh, again, to say that my approach to the position is the same as if I were the full-time administrator. Um, I think, you know, first and foremost is working with the board of selectmen and communicating with the board of selectmen. I think after you've done this long enough, you know, you know, your antenna are way out there. And I think, believe you have a sense of what the potential issues are. You don't want to know about every phone call I have and all the minutia, but you, you know, I, the, the interim or the town administrator has a sense of what can become important, what you should know about. Um, I don't know what the process is in Northboro. Sometimes things go to the chair, but I mean, I have a very open management style and you'll have my cell number. You can call me anytime, um, come in and talk. You know, my time is your time. Um, so that's the primary thing. I think that the other thing is, and I believe, again, if you were to talk to selectmen that I've worked with and department heads, uh, and this has been kind of kind of humorous because oftentimes when I'm leaving a town, they'll say, we want to thank you for your honesty, which isn't a comment that I've heard a lot during my regular career. Um, you know, there are some people who want that and expect it. And then there are others who, you know, not so much. And, you know, you get to know which is which with different people. But I think the honesty is important, um, telling you how I feel about the town. Um, you know, Northboro has a reputation, I think, in the profession of being a very stable and well-run community. You have had a succession of excellent administrators who have led long tenures. John, I mean, I remember when Northboro had Rocco Longo. Um, so I still like to think that I could bring some value to the town, maybe in the communities that I've worked in, I've seen a number of different issues. I've seen good ways to do things, bad ways to do things. And I, I think with that experience, I'm hoping and expecting with that experience, I can still bring some value to the community and some good counsel to the selectmen. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Julianne, you're up next. And you're muted, first one of the night. Hi, Mr. Reed. Nice to meet you. Um, my question is going to um, ask you a little bit more about what Kristen asked. And you mentioned that there were um, good ways to do things and not so good ways to do things. And my question is, um, if you would talk about a little bit more about your experience in other communities, specifically, um, what made your tenure a success and what were some problems that you encountered? I think the interim jobs have been a little bit different. Um, uh, specific problems, I think that, well, what comes to mind, and it's not really a specific problem, but a number of problems, um, and I guess this gets back to the honesty. I, in one community where I was interim, I, I had to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the selectmen. Of course, this was done privately and it was done individually. But I had a hard time understanding the state of affairs in that town. And I told them point blank, I said, you know, if you had told me the state of this town and the things that are undone in this community before I started here, I simply wouldn't have believed it. And that was handled, you know, and accepted very different ways. And, you know, one or two of them didn't want to hear that, but they had to hear it. I think that sometimes, you know, and you're all part time. Um, some people want to hear good things and assume that things are going well. Um, those are the people I think who really need to hear that maybe things aren't going so well. So that was a particularly difficult uh, part of the job. But I mean, I still, I think that that's my obligation. I didn't have any problem telling them that and let the chips fall where they may. Um, but that's more of a general answer to your question. Specifically, um, I mean, issues 
can be very thorny, um, but you just do the best you can. You don't really know about a community until you start working there and get the story behind the story. And you just deal with the issues the best you can. Thank you. I, I appreciate that answer. Very good. And Jason, you're up next. Hello. Hi, good evening. Uh, in your opinion, what qualities and professional experience are necessary to succeed as an interim in any community? Um, I don't see, I hope I'm, this isn't interpreted as kind of avoiding the question, but I don't really see anything specific about the interim position. Uh, at least my approach to it. I approach the job, as I said, as if I were the full-time administrator. Um, I think the interim positions, for the reasons I mentioned before, have actually been easier for me, being able to be honest with the selectmen, um, which I've appreciated very much in the towns that I've been in. Maybe they feel that, uh, well, this guy has a long career and retired successfully, so he must know something. Or maybe they just feel, well, well he's only going to be here, f you know, for however many months, so we can stand them that long. But um, I don't see the interim position as really being different than being the full-time administrator. That's been my approach to it. Thank you. And Scott, you're up next. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Reed. Good evening. Uh, my question is, um, if appointed as the interim town administrator for Northborough, how would you build the trust and st uh, confidence of the staff and the board uh, how would you establish your leadership style without that full authority of a permanent town administrator? Yeah, you know, that I think that gets right to the heart of, of the issue and, and how you handle the position. Um, I don't want to sound, well, I don't want to be immodest, but I, I mean, I have a very open management style. Um, I look on myself and specifically department heads is just being equals you know they're not necessarily looking at me as a supervisor but as a colleague and someone that they can go to and and talk to um i believe in the old saying about management by walking around staying close contact with department heads showing up and just chatting with them how's it going how are you doing you know what's what's your future what do you see as the future of your department because that's where all the work gets done it's been it's been surprising to me in communities that I've worked in, how many times I've had those conversations with department heads and employees, you know, employees, everybody can talk to me and I certainly don't go around department heads, but I'll just talk to them about how they're doing and how they view the town. But after these conversations, how they're leaving and they'll go, you know, I never was able, I was never able to do this before. So that other kind of, whatever you want to call it, the authoritarian management style is out there, but that's not my style at all. You know, I'll just walk around, show up in a department and they're not going to say, uh, here he is again, what does he want? I mean, they know that there's, there's somebody that they can talk to and hopefully they'll have some chocolate there. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, that concludes our, our questions. The only other question I, I have to ask is, are you available relatively soon? And are you available to work? We're looking for someone that will be a full-time interim, you know, 40 hours a week or, or whatever it takes to, to get the job done. I could start this week. Um, uh, a full-time, well, in all of my contracts, um, the agreement was that I would be in the town hall three days a week. Um, Hopefully that's not a deal breaker because um, I, that doesn't mean I'm working three days a week. Um, like I said, you'll have my cell phone. Uh, I just put in whatever is necessary. I remember when I was in Hopedale is when COVID hit. And I'm sure you all recall how that just turned everything upside down. The town hall was closed. No more public meetings. You're very concerned about employees and their health. Um, who's gonna come into the town hall? No public meetings. We didn't even know when, when and if we were going to have a budget because we didn't know when and if we were going to have town meeting. I can't tell you how many hours I put in because of all of the different changes, but I guess that's the point. I don't keep track. You do what's necessary. 
I work on my days off and some towns, if there was an emergency or an upcoming town meeting, I've worked weekends, you do whatever you have to do. Like I said, I approach the job as if I were the full-time administrator. I may physically be in the town hall three days a week, but I'm not just working three days a week. Perfect. I appreciate that. I do. Um, thank you very, very much for, uh, for your interest. Uh, we're going to be doing some deliberating in a few minutes. And uh, Bob and Buzz will, uh, you know, assuming we reach a decision tonight, Bob and Buzz will let you know what's going on and, um, and we'll go from there. Well, I just wanted to, I just recall, I've worked with MRI in a couple of communities and, um, you know, one was a town administrator search, another was a um, DPW director search. I think they're first rate. I know they'll do a first rate job for you. I know that on your agenda tonight was uh, picking a selection committee. So I think between MRI and that committee, the role of the town administrator in the transition, or at least in the recruitment and selection process may be somewhat limited, but I've had all kinds of roles in the different communities that I've worked in. And so whatever you decide is the role of the administrator was, you know, I can, I can help with that. Great. Thank you very much, Bob. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thus concludes our interviews for the evening. Um, do we want to start discussing the three candidates? Managed to end not, not too much later than we, we anticipated. Um, so that's, that's good. Um, what we did last time around for, uh, for the search consultants um, is I just simply asked, are there any of the three that we think we should just, um, for whatever reason, not give too much consideration to uh, if there's anybody that, um, that that you didn't think was was for whatever reason for us not a good match. And it's okay if there are none. Figured I'd open that up first. Okay, I don't see any hands up. So that's oh, sorry, Julianne. Well, uh, before yeah, you don't have to volunteer anybody. I'm not saying that somebody is <laughs> fits that bill, but I wanted to offer that again. So I, I think I need to hear about, um, before we move on, this is, this is the complete list of people who have offered to fill the interim town administrator list, right? This is, okay. Right. All right. Good question. Okay. Um, why don't we go through in the order that we interviewed and, uh, and just everyone say your thoughts. Um, so Kevin Flynn, we interviewed first. Um, opinions, plus, minus, anything at all? Scott? I guess um, before we go too deep in it, is there, is there any additional info information, Bob or Buzz, that, you know, in the course of you screening candidates that, you know, you would use to, to supplement uh, the information we got in terms of resumes, cover letters, and, and the talk tonight, is there, were there any points that you came across that um, you know, it would be important for us to know about any, either, uh, each of the candidates? Buzz, you want to comment on Kevin, uh, seeing that's the one who's been brought up? Okay, I, I know Kevin from um, a previous search uh, for the town administrator in Hubbardston, Massachusetts, and um, he, you know, presented himself uh, in in Hubbardston uh, about six, seven months ago, just like he did tonight. He's an experienced guy. He has uh, a well-rounded uh, background in all uh, areas of, you know, sort of in municipal government, from planning to economic development to, um, uh, you know, town administrator, town manager kinds of experiences. So, um, you know, he's... You know, I, uh, I I know of of, uh, of no issues that would uh, preclude him from stepping in and and doing a good job. He ha you know he has a level of enthusiasm that you saw tonight that I witnessed uh, in the interviews in Hubbardston. He was one of the finalists in Hubbardston. He was basically you know he was basically the number two uh, uh, fellow when the when the board of selectmen voted. Uh, you know, he was right in the mix and they selected a, a, another gentleman, but um, he's, he's very competent. And I think as he portrayed himself, could step right in 
and provide you know, a, a smooth transition. Thank you. Anybody else want to offer any uh, any feedback or thoughts on Kevin Flynn? Kristen. Um, so I wrote down um, communication and then I underlined it a few times because he kept talking about that. He mentioned that a lot. Um, and he also mentioned calm presence and he did bring up that it's the year of three town administrators. I thought that was an yeah, insightful yeah. point. Yep. And that, so that's stressful for people in town, it's stressful. And I know like people in town don't really pay attention and they might not even realize like, wait, John Coderre has gone like two months from now, right? <laughs> and who's this guy? And then they come back a couple months later and there's another person. And um, so I think that was a good point. And, um, but also for the employees, um, a, certainly a lot of change. So um, I liked his idea of written reports weekly, sort of an, like an update of what, <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what was accomplished, he said. So that sounded good to me. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Um, I mean, my, the notes that I took down, I, I found him very likable, very knowledgeable. Um, my concerns, there will be concerns concerns about it you know anybody potentially is the towns that he has worked in generally are much much smaller than northboro um he knows how to do all of the things but all the things are done differently in a town of you know 6000 people versus uh 16000 people um you know looking over the towns in which he has been administrator i think Barry is the largest with the population of 6,000 and the annual budget of a little under 10 million. And, you know, we're 16,000 and 70 million. Um, and that doesn't mean that he can't do the job, but it's a different job than those. And that, that's my only pause, not that I would disqualify him for that. Any other thoughts? And Kevin Flynn, or do we want to move along? Jason. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that assessment about the the size of community from, from past experience. Um, as you say, I don't necessarily think it's uh, disqualifying. Um, I, uh, it was an interesting exchange at the end with the third applicant about um, availability and work week schedule and I don't know that we have that information from the other two candidates and whether or not that factors into you know part of the decision process about expectation of someone being in the office five days a week as opposed to three days a week so I'm just wondering if Bob or Buzz has uh, any insight or or what's conventional in, in current circumstances for interim managers uh we we do. Buzz, you want me to come in first, and then you I don't, why don't you start first, and I can tell you about Kevin. Uh, okay, so um, as, as Jason, as we were looking around to help you guys with this interim thing, we we believe me, talk to a lot of folks who we know do this, um, and some <laughs> were reluctant uh, to think about the full time 40 plus you know whatever it is they were just reluctant to do it you're coming up on town meetings and then you're going into the summer and as bob your last guy talked about you, you know i'm retired <laughs> i'm not sure i, I want to work the grind of 40 or 50 hours and then work through july and maybe into august and all that kind of stuff so we heard that you heard it a little bit from bob but we heard that from a lot of the candidates uh, that we, everybody was interested in Northboro. Uh, everybody we knew who, uh, and a lot of them are currently in communities. But to your question, Jason, a lot of them, a, a lot of the ones we talked to are not on the full 40 hours. A lot of them. Some are, some are, no question. And you got two before you tonight who said they had no problems with that. Um, so we've seen both and we've seen both work. Um, and work well. Um, I know we've talked with Becca 
<clears throat> Becca would like somebody there. And that's up to you. That's up to you. But we, we've seen both ways work and work well. Especially if you got the quality candidate. You know, if you got somebody who's not quite sure what they're doing, you know, somebody can, somebody once told me this in my management career, <clears throat> there are managers who can make decisions on a split second. There are managers who have to think about it for two days. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so some people can get a lot more done in less time. And, uh, but, and I'm not mm -hmm. picking on one or the other or any of them, but it's just a style. Buzz? Yeah, well, it, you should know, we contacted uh, a number of people. I did a mass uh, mailing to the uh, Retired Managers Association, and some of the comments I got back was like, you know, I'm just finishing up in uh, XYZ, and I'm looking forward to sailing, you know, I'm going down <laughs> to the Cape to my place this summer. Another guy said, you know, COVID's ended. I want to I want to travel this summer with my family. So there's um uh, part, of, part of the... <laughs> The unique situation here is we're, we're you know lapsing into the summertime here, so people uh, who are retired sometimes have other priorities and working as um, interims. But in in Kevin's case, you know he I I heard him say he'd be here you know whatever you want five days a week. He you know when I when I talked to him, I told him that you know this was a five day a week uh, assignment, and are you prepared for that? And I think from what I heard tonight, he. He said that. Thank you. Um, I, I, I guess since we're talking about that topic, I'll ask Becca um, your thoughts about um, somebody who needs to be in the office five days a week versus con any concerns that you have about someone that is, for for example, in the in the, the um, in Bob's case. Um, in the office three days a week, but available the other two. Um, yeah, I know initially um, I had expressed a desire to have somebody, you know, in the office five days a week. Um, you know, my preference is that we pick the most qualified and best candidate and whether or not that person is there three days a week or five days a week, frankly, that's kind of secondary for me. Um, you know, I think having somebody who has experience and um, is ready to come in and get the job done um, and is the right fit for uh, you all is is my first priority. Um, and as long as I can get a hold of them, if something comes up, you know, I, I think we can probably make it work. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Becca. Uh, Kristen. Can I just add one thing? Um, so, Becca, you just said... Uh, is the right fit for us, but I think, um, and I know you're not like voting tonight, but I I am happy to hear any any comments that you have. It it would be good for you to have like a a good um, working relationship with this person too. So you know that's important. Keep the town going, which they all did say was the most important thing. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Thanks. Um, back to Kevin Flynn. Any other items of discussion on him for now? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to David Marciello. Um, thoughts on David? Uh, Julianne? Yeah, so uh, with David, I really liked his um, his uh emphasis on open management style and empathy and um you know he's a his background is in law which is very helpful um but but one of the things that i'm i'm still toying with in my mind is he's he he would also come to this position um hoping that it will lead to the permanent position and i I, I don't know if if what we should be really looking for is a real interim right now. Um, someone who doesn't necessarily want the permanent job to help us figure out what we need in a permanent job. So, so I'm, I'm still a little confused about that. Jason. 
Uh, I, I think I agree uh, that uh, my expectations at the interim is uh, is going to be a temporary position while we make the search for the permanent person. And I think it's a complication for the interim person to also potentially be a candidate and have essentially a different uh, path um, in, in that regard. Uh, I, uh, of the three candidates, I guess I felt that um, his background and credentials, while um, impressive, are almost a little uh, uh, mixed in in the amount of experience or the different areas uh, of his focus, um, law practice and uh, some town administration and the like. Whereas, uh, you know, my take on the other two is that they're much more focused on town administration. And I think for an interim position, that's more the direct experience and the direct focus that uh, that uh, that I would be looking for. Uh, Scott. Yeah, then an, an opportunity if there's any uh, additional information, Buzz or Bob, that you know didn't come through on the on the resume or the interview. Want to start? <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, he did have um, a good, uh, I would say, good long tenure in Rehoboth. And, um, you know, as you can see from his resume, pursued a, uh, M MPA and, and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, in Millbury, he did, uh, he, there was, you know, I think he said it, there was a change on the board of uh, selectmen. And um, uh, they wanted, you know, something new. They wanted uh, somebody else uh, to fill that role. And, you uh, Rather than have a big, you know, big uh, fight over it, they reached an agreement, uh, and you know, he he left, which, in our opinion, uh, as um, uh, managers, uh, you know, it's the right thing to do. You know, some we have some colleagues that fight it, and um, it's not a good thing for their career. Um, so he left, and I, you know, he left uh, Millbury in in good financial shape uh, when he left. So. We don't have any issue with uh, uh, Bob and I with his professional experience in Millbury, uh, and he, you know, he's an experienced fellow that actually brings a lot of different dimensions uh, to the job, as he tried to, you know, articulate tonight. And then, just as a follow-up, you know, Becca, uh, Mr. Marciello, you know, indicated that that you had. Uh, uh, worked before or interacted before any any additional information you would bring Becca uh, I don't have anything specific David was the manager in Mulberry when I was the assistant in Grafton those communities about one another and so we um, on occasion interacted with one another gotcha thanks um, I, I think similar to what what Jason said, and maybe a little bit of Julianne, I, I thought he was incredibly qualified, maybe a little too qualified um, for a position like this. Um, and I was and am concerned about someone that we know is interested in the permanent position starting as interim, because if the mix isn't good and um, and he's he's not brought through you know forward as a, as a finalist for example that becomes a very uncomfortable situation if he's an interim expect having expected to get the the full job and um, and clearly isn't going there um, and may have to be in that position as an interim for for a little while um, and that that's that's just not a good place to be in for either us or for him um, I, I'm. I totally appreciate um, what you described, Buzz, about his situation in Millbury. Um, I know sometimes politics gets in the way of good administration and uh, and things go a little awry. So I will I, I can credit that. I thought the way that he listed his resume was a little bit weird, and I I, I had to ask about that, and I kind of knew the reason anyway. Um, that's it's just a weird way to list the contracted positions and that caused me to think about that maybe a little too much and see even more gaps in there than I would expect. Um, you know, our other two candidates, uh, clearly their, 
their career is town administration. In the latter case, their current career is interim town administration very clearly. Uh, and, um, and, and Mr. Barciello um, goes back and forth between being an administrator for a little while and being an attorney for a little while and back and forth. Uh, and I, I think we're better off with somebody that sees this as, as their long-term career. And I'm not sure if that is for, uh, for Mr. Marciello. Um, certainly qualified, and I, I think he would find a good fit somewhere. I'm just not sure if it's here. Other thoughts, comments? Okay. Oh, uh, Jason. Sorry, I'll, I'll just pop this in here, but... Um... Uh, and I understand candidates wanting to describe circumstances where they've, you know, been able to resolve problems or whatever. But I think in some of the uh, in uh, some of the circumstances he was describing, perhaps a little too specific about people in particular positions and the per personal circumstances. Uh, I can't say I, I had that written down too. Yeah, I can't say I felt very comfortable hearing that level of detail. I think it would have been sufficient just to say that a number of positions for, for various reasons uh, were vacated and required him to, to be adaptive. But uh, the, the, the additional detail uh, probably was not necessary. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion on this candidate? All right, we'll move on to Bob Reed. Uh, any comments, feedback, thoughts on Mr. Reed? Scott. And now this one kind of gets to the reason I, I asked on the previous two. So in, in this case, all we had was Mr. Reed's, you know, list of uh, positions. There wasn't a kind of a cover narrative. So now, now I'm really asking the question, Bob and Buzz, you know, any additional kind of color or narrative from from your talks with with Bob um, that kind of fills in on things that we didn't cover tonight. We um, <clears throat> Bob has worked with us uh, a number of years, as you can see from his resume. Uh, he's been doing the interim gigs for quite some time. He is and I'll, I think I'll say this. He is pretty highly regarded in in the interim field. Uh, he is sought after uh, by a number of communities. He just lost out. Uh, he was in the Barry interim search, and um, he did not get that. So as soon as I heard that, I called him, and he says, I'm interested. I'm, I, this is what I do. And you heard him about, you know, he's still getting over retirement. <laughs> it's, it's what he does, and he enjoys it. Uh, he's got a, and, and he's got a, he's got a good reputation, uh, for what he does. And he gives you, your, he gives the community a commitment and, uh, you'll have to work out what that commitment is, uh, Mitch, if you choose to move forward with him, but, uh, he, he's a committed guy who's interested in helping communities through their transition processes. Julianne and Kristen. So oh, a, a couple of comments, for, but first a question for Bob and Buzz. Has has the fact that um, Mr. Reed likes to work from home, I mean, I technically I think he would, he's going to put in the 40 hours plus, but work from offsite. Has, has that been a problem in towns? Not to our knowledge. Uh, he, he gets good and I don't know if you'll you'll ask about Bob going forward, but uh, I'm sure you can check pretty quickly. He gets good good reviews uh, from the communities he just moves out of. He is not interested in the permanent full time. <laughs> no, that and and you know that's what I really um, what stood out for me is his is his complete honesty. It it was um, I I definitely appreciate that. And one thing that I picked up on is that his you know, he communicates with department heads, but he mentioned twice that he goes to staff as, you know, other staff members as well. And I think that's really important. I, um, there were a couple of things that were, were unique about, about Mr. Reed that, that I found very, um, that could be very beneficial for us. 
Kristen? Um, I liked his sort of deadpan down to earth, take me or leave me kind of attitude. <laughs> um, I, I really appreciate that. And I think, um, I, I think uh, employees in particular, that would, that would make it easy to work for somebody like that or with somebody like that. Like, as he said, he treats people like colleagues, um, and uh, has an open management style. So I, I appreciated that. And also his, his um, regard for, or I guess uh, people who, who talk about him um, regard his honesty as, as very helpful and, and beneficial and maybe, um, oh, and it just made me think like, are there things about Northboro that I don't know? And then he would come in and tell me like, oh, <laughs> That sounds great. <laughs> I'm sure there are. <laughs> Kristen, sit down. Listen, this is what's happening. Um, no, but I just, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that about him very much. Jason. Uh, yeah, I agree. I thought he, and this is just my own impression, uh, interpersonally, uh, just having that very direct, candid, uh, uh, approach conversationally. Um, I, I felt very comfortable right up to the end where uh, we were talking about the three days a week thing. And then I had to get some clarification on that. But if, uh, if that's uh, not necessarily an unusual working relationship, and if uh, Becca is comfortable that, that the focus should be on choosing who we think is the most effective person and the most uh, best fit for our circumstances, um, then I'd, my feeling is that, uh, you know, that's the impression he made on me. Yeah, I, I like Bob a lot. Um, I was somewhat amazed that his questions were, or his answers to the questions were the most brief of the three. Yet I thought in a way they were the most complete. Um, he, he has a, a really good way of getting to the point without seeming quick. Uh, and I was amazed that where the clock was at the end of, of that. Um, yeah, I, I said, I don't think we missed anything. Um, I liked his demeanor. Um, I liked his professionalism and I, I really like the idea. He's clearly, he's clearly a professional interim. Uh, this, this is what he does. I'm maybe a little jealous of that kind of a lifestyle. I, I picture him working for six months, really, really hard. And then going fishing or traveling the world, or I, I have no idea what he does in his off time, but I, I think he intentionally carves that out is just the impression that I get. Um, and I, I think that's a good fit for the kind of person that we're looking for. Scott. Kind of sounds, uh, we may have a consensus going on. <laughs> so yes. we, may have, we may have come to a, I, I, a decision. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I'm seeing that all around the table. Um, the consensus read to me looks like we're we all think that Bob Reed is our first pick on the condition that um, that we're not concerned about his availability. And I would purely lean on Becca for that. I think you've already answered the question to some extent that you're looking for the best person, not necessarily the best number of hours. And I just want to make sure that if we chose someone that can only commit to three days in the office on a regular basis, you're okay with that in this case. Um, yeah, given Bob's significant background and experience, I would certainly be comfortable with that sort of arrangement. Sounds like we're there. Great. Anybody want to have any discussion? If not, um, Somewhere out there is a motion. Um, before we read the motion, hold on. Um, the way I think it was Becca that wrote this that allowed the chair to neg negotiate on behalf of the board. Um, I'm happy to do that. However, please have the expectation that I will be leaning on Becca heavily for that, um, as I alluded to by, in an email to you earlier, so you're not surprised by this. Uh, and we'll also, of course, um, lean on Bob and Buzz for the process. Okay. Are you ready for the motion? I am. Um, 
I move the board vote to appoint Robert Reed as interim town administrator subject to reference checks and successful contract negotiation and to allow the chair to negotiate on behalf of the board. Second. Okay, motion made by Kristen, seconded by Jason. Any further discussion? Um, Bob or Buzz, any further input before we vote? Any uh, suggestions for a different motion or anything else? I think we're uh, just here for you, Mitch, and the board members. You need us, just call us. Uh, I know Becca knows this stuff pretty well. Uh, Bob is, because uh, we know him, uh, Bob will work with you on whatever you need done, so. Excellent, thank you very much. All right, motion made and seconded. All those in favor, Julianne. Aye. Kristen. Aye. Jason. Yep. Aye. Scott. Aye. I also vote aye. Vote is unanimous in favor. Bob Reed, welcome to the town of Northboro. Very excited about that. Um, so Mitch, do you want us to communicate with him that you'll yeah. be in touch or? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, good. Um, we have done this. Is there any other business to come before the board? Scott. Yeah, Mitch, I just had a couple of questions if, if we can fit it in just to kind of sure. on the bits of unfinished business, if you will. Sure. Um, we talked a little bit about White Cliffs and a potential schedule to bring that forward. Yeah. In terms of staff collecting uh, uh, additional answers, is that being headed up by Lori Connors or who's, uh, who's leading the charge on getting more information from Metro West? Becca, do you have any insight into that? Uh, I have not heard any further communication between. Um, I have had no communication with Metro West, but I can but, certainly yeah. check with Lori if you'd like me to. Yeah. Okay, a big question for your first day on the job. That's all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just to meet to meet a, a May eighth or or whenever schedule, we need to need to close the loop on that. Uh, and then for the categorization of public ARPA input, is there an updated schedule, anticipated date for that? I am hoping that May 8th meeting also, we can have uh, an initial run through. I just, I just think the, the April, whatever, whatever our next meeting, it's a week from today meeting, uh, we're going to have a big agenda that time. That's the last one before town meeting. Okay, great. And so that yeah. would give us the categorization on, on public ARPA input. And then I think from staff, uh, we've got kind of some ideas of overall, some additional project-based ARPA uh, funding. So if, I don't know if we're able to fold that all together to have at least a framework, right, of how, how to approach it uh, yeah. going forward. And I think um, there, there may be just on the ARPA item, there may be just from talking with John last week, there may be a couple of items that we may need to take quick action on um, or things that need to get funded that weren't funded in the budget, um, you know, might be uh, there was something that was an executive session last time that I just don't want to bring up because it was executive session and um, and then um, uh, carrying costs for White Cliffs, we might need to allocate some okay. funds for that. that not, yeah, that was certain. top of my mind for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I said I think there there are a couple that aren't aren't in the giant scale of the one point seven million dollars for a school roof that um, is said things that just weren't put in the budget that we'll need to do. Great. Uh, two two more quick items. Uh, also, was then the appointment to the town offices feasibility study committee. Uh, we were going to collect the different uh, additional information. Uh, is that is that something that would be collect more information on those uh, recommended appointments, and then we cover that? Becca, do you have any insight on that? Uh, I, I do not. If there is additional information that the board is seeking, I'm happy to assist in pulling that together in preparation for your next meeting. We had, um, it, I'll get to you in just a second, Julianne, but it, my recollection is we didn't get any of the application information on the applicants that, um, that John had put forward for consideration. So um, now that's on, on your plate. So whether they be the same people or different people is your call. 
But um, from my perspective, I think it's good for us to have some detail as far as who these people are um, for for our consideration. Julianne? Uh, well, additionally, I would say I, I think we we owe it to the town and to ourselves to see all of the applications, not just the the ones that were put forward. I agree. Okay. And just one last one, and I think I was on record last time of not agreeing that we needed to see all of them, but um, that's that's up to how how Becca you wanna you wanna uh, take that forward. Uh, one other last piece of information. This is somewhat esoteric, but I um, looking to see if the report from the Collins Center was delivered. This is more of Becca in your kind of realm and from a from a administration and um, personnel point of view. Yeah, so we're just waiting for the final draft to be delivered from the center. Um, once I have that in hand, I'll prepare a cover memo and I'll send that out to you all um, by email. So you have that. That should be that should be this week, honestly. Oh, okay, great, perfect. Thank yeah. you for that. Okay, that. Thanks, Mitch, for indulging me on those. Oh, sure. Uh, no, of course. Kind of no, I'll, I'll leaving questions. things hanging that were open. Yeah. Uh, did anybody have anything else? Um, and. The Collins Center reminded me of another one, the municipal aggregation bids. Are those, I forget, Becky, you did tell me the date that those were coming back in, and I don't remember if that has already passed or if that's uh, yes, any, we, any minute. Yes, we now. have those in hand. Yep. Okay, great. Good, so we'll be able to move forward on that one. That's good. Okay. Um, Mitch? Bob, one, yes. One other thing? Yeah, so sure, of course. Our takeaways, Buzz and I are taking notes here. Okay. So the ad's going to go in on the 10th. The return date is May 8th. We're going to create a written schedule for all of you with, with dates in it so you can kind of plan your calendars out. I know we talked just kind of high end about June, and we'll try to firm that up a bit and give you some dates. You guys need to decide a screening committee, the composition of that, all that kind of stuff. But like I told you, we got a, a few weeks for that. Don't Don't get crazy. Becca, we're going to need to talk to you probably tomorrow, Wednesday, about the individual contacts for the board members. Um, and then we'll talk to you about scheduling department heads and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we've got some stuff that uh, we'll keep you in the loop as to what's happening. And uh, Becca has been our point of contact and, and Mitch, you also. So we'll try to keep the board up to date on everything that's happening. Yeah, we really appreciate your help on this. I, I've grown so comfortable with you. I, I didn't even realize that I should have booted you out of the meeting when we when it's on to other things, but we're happy you're there. Um, and this is basically the, the end of our meeting. It was obviously a meeting called primarily for this issue. Um, and um, our, our last item on the agenda is public input. If there is any member of the public that wishes to speak at anything else before we wrap up, raise your virtual hand. There are only a couple people in the audience uh, going once going twice, gone. Uh, and with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> by Scott seconded, I think, by Jason first, um, and then everybody else. Um, all those in favor, Scott? Aye. Jason? Aye. Julianne? Aye. Kristen? Aye. I also vote aye. Vote is unanimous. In favor, we are adjourned 9.45 p.m. Thank you very, very much, everyone. Really Thank, appreciate you. It. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.